And then whenever you're ready to end your practice, you might end by bringing your hands up to heart center, palms pressing together, or maybe letting the hands gently rest onto the heart. And from that place within, sending yourself lots of gratitude for dedicating this time to you today. And I send my gratitude out to you for sharing your practice with me. Have a beautiful day. about this program, we'd love to hear it. Email or call us or send us your feedback through social media. This is Rogers TV. When you give a part of yourself through Canadian Blood Services, your donation could go on to captivate a country. Fuel the future. Be the best dad or support cultures to thrive. Because when you donate through Canadian Blood Services, you don't just make a difference. You make all the difference. Join Canada's lifeline today at blood.ca. Dear everybody, you'll see thousands of images today. Here are three you won't see. A girl who uses a walker eating ice cream with her friends. A young woman with a prosthetic leg modeling the latest denim trends. A kid who uses a wheelchair busting a dance move. You're influenced by the images you see and the ones you don't. It's time to include disability in the picture. Sign Hall & Blurview's Dear Everybody Agreement and help create a world without stigma for kids and youth with disabilities. Visit DearEveryBody.ca. <laughs> Amolo Multicultural Festival Newfoundland and Labrador, a leader in supporting economic, social and cultural integration of newcomers in Newfoundland and Labrador and in bridging communities through arts and heritage. This is Rogers TV. You're watching Rogers TV St. John's.
है तुम
opening at 554.
your Rogers TV three stars of the game. From the Marystown Clippers goaltender, Peter Labor. Number four, the second star, Noah Ryan. And your first star, number eight, Sam Rutgazer. Final score here on rink B, Marystown six, Ascension three, as the Clippers take down the Astros. Of the game for the Clippers, number eight, Sam Rockgazer. To left winger, number eight, Sam Rockgazer. Now we will. We, the Royal Newfoundland Regiment, player of the game for the Ascension Astros. Player of the game for the Astros, number three, Sean Quinlan. The game is number three, Sean Quinlan. Quinlan, the Royal Newfoundland Regiment player of the game for the Ascension Astros in their 6-3 defeat at the hands of the Marystown Clippers. Quinlan heading over now for some handshakes with the Marystown players. That's going to do it for this one here on Rink B, folks. Marystown six, Ascension three. Stay tuned now as we will have puck drop coming at three o'clock between the Gander Collegiate Concords and the Stephenville High
gentlemen, welcome to Rogers TV live coverage of the Royal Newfoundland Regiment Memorial High School Hockey Tournament. Today's game is between the Gander Concords and the Stephenville Spartans. We are here on rink B, the Gander Concords coming out just behind me now as Gander has gone 2-0 already. They're looking to complete the 3-0 sweep. A Stephenville coming off of a tough loss to Exploits Valley this afternoon. Final score of that one was 5-4. If you've ever watched the movie, The Mighty Ducks, it felt like we were living it. Chris Oldford of the Exploits Valley Eagles had two goals, but was awarded a penalty shot with .6 to go. They let the clock run to zero. If it didn't go in, we were going to overtime. If it did go in, 5 for the final score, and Oldford completed the hat trick. Final score, 5 4. So, Stephenville looking to avenge that loss from just a couple hours ago. So, we're going to head to the anthem, and right after the anthem, you will hear Chris Ryan for the call of today's game. Good afternoon, folks, as Nicholas said, and welcome to the Paradise Double Ice Complex for this afternoon's games featuring the Stephenville Spurtons and the Gander Concords. My name is Chris Ryan, and I'll be bringing the play-by-play -play here for this game this afternoon. The anthem is played. The referees for this afternoon's contest are Matt Fitzgerald and Gabe Brown, the linesmen Nate Kenny and Nick Dunn. About to get underway here now. Decent crowd on hand for two out-of-town visiting teams. As what should be a good, hard-hitting high school hockey game. Wait for those two teams now to work themselves for the opening face-off here in this game. As Nick mentioned, Steve Bill still looking for that win, that first win. Face off underway here now. Concord's win it off the leg of a, a Spartans player. Gander gets possession back in the neutral zone now. They'll send it deep into the Spartan zone. Spartans get it out in the neutral zone. Quickly chipped back in to the Stephenville zone. Kalen Layden with it now below the goal line, receiving some pressure there from James Curl. To the far side, no one there. Defenseman steps in off of the bench, chips it ahead now. Going in for Gander, that's Layden with it. Layden holds up on the half wall, shot right in on net, save made by Castrillo. Just 46 seconds into this opening period. First shot on goal register. Spartans win the face-off. Concords quickly to it. A rim around the boards there by Airy. Comes all the way down the ice for an icing call. So face-off will come all the way back in Spartans territory. Just on the opposite side here.
Galloway, Pinson, and Fowler up front for the Concords. Wins the draw. Quick shot and in the back of the net. Alex Kellaway with a quick shot there as Pinson won that draw. It goes five hole through Castrillo. It's Gander on the board first, just 59 seconds into this opening period. Here is that replay again. Face off one just puts it through and a quick shot there to the five hole in the back of the net. Concords win the draw, quickly put it up ahead. Zach Russell with it, now Russell goes down. No call on the play. Behind the net, battling for it now, that's Pittman. Pittman with him in the corner, he drops it down low to Carter Yetman. Yetman tried to put it up top there, but Blackwood couldn't handle it. Yetman with it down low. Yetman with the puck, sends it down low again for Russell, Zach Russell. Looking for an open option here. Russell will start to cut towards the middle. Shot in on net. Save made by Castrillo. Thirteen twenty-eight to go. Face off one by Gander. Played back to the point. Put in there now for Canning. Canning with the puck, shot just high over the net. Canning picks it back up in the corner, receiving a little pressure there from the Spartans. Bump in the corner. Ryan McIsaac, first to it. He takes a bump down on the low boards. Spartans to get it out into the neutral zone now. It's quickly collected back by Evan Sargent. Sargent plays it back for Hiscock. Hiscock of the Concords up at the neutral zone, goes right to the stick of the Spartans. They lay it back in Concord's territory. Call with an L. It's chipped in by Jordan Martin. Collision down on the backboards. The other way now comes Gander. It's Burns with it. Kyle Burns gets by the defender, takes it down low. Burns looking for a centering opportunity. Shoots, scores. Burns with that centering opportunity on the side of the net gets it to Sergeant and he puts it in the back of the net. 2 0 Concords, 12 36 to go. Replay of that one again. We see Russell carried down low, just centers it right up in the slot. And Sergeant with an easy shot there. It's his second goal of this tournament in as many days. Back at center, Spartans win the opening draw here. They chipped it off the glass, but it was a glass that separates the penalty box from their bench. Therefore, faceoff will come back down inside their zone. Concord's quick to the draw. Centering opportunity didn't work out that so well for him that time. Back the other way come the Spartans now. Not a little bit of a rush. March with it. Shot there. Got blocked. Concords bring it back the other way. With that now, that's Reed Fowler. Over to Fowler. Fowler with a backhand shot. Top corner. Scores. Reed Fowler. Backhand opportunity over the shoulder of the goaltender in the back of the net. 3 0 Concords. Just two minutes and 51 seconds into this contest, they lead 3 0. The replay of that goal here now. Side to side, top corner. That's his third goal of this tournament for Reed Fowler. Concords quickly jump on that puck, send it deep down Spartans territory. Kosh with it. Plays it over for Layden, who bumps his man. Spartans pick up the loose puck, come back the other way now. Shot in on net, easy pad save made there by Tull. Bump in the corner. It's played around. Concord to the far side, gets over to Kalen Layden. Bouncing puck. Sent deep in the zone. With it there now, that's Zach Russell. Russell over for Layden. Layden shoots. Save made by Castillo.
changes for both sides now in their lines. Face off coming back down Spartans territory. Concords win the draw, they bring it down. Backhanded there by Ryan McIsaac. Spartans come away with it now up through the neutral zone. Rushing in with this Kyle Target. Target shot goes off the stick of Nate Parsons and up into the mesh for a whistle. So the face-off this time will be in, in, the, in the Concord's end. 11-19 to go. Poked out by Gander. Quickly back to collect it. It's Ryan McIsaac. For Stephenville. Gander with it now. They'll dump it in by Michael Canning. Castillo out to slow things down behind his net. Tried to play it around the glass. That didn't work out so well for him, so he played it up into the mesh for the whistle. 10.47 to go here now. Face off to the left. Castillo. Quick shot there from Sidney Pittman. Almost in the back of the net. Castillo with a nice pad save there. Back to the point now. It's played in. Spartans chip it out off the boards. It's going to be an icing call charge against them this time, though. Just 10.30 left here now in the first period. We managed to kill a couple of seconds off each time here as we go. Played back to the point. Kept alive by Sargent. Spartans finally get it out. They've got the blue now with a drive towards the net. A centering opportunity. Miss with a point shot there from McIsaac. Loose puck in front of the goaltender. Loose in front. Referee blows it down as he lost sight of it. The best chance by the Stephenville Spartans so far in this first period just came that time with a little scrimmage in front of the net. Tolk staying calm. Trying to find that puck. Concords win the draw. Sp Sergeant quickly to it. Played it back to the point. Where Ryan McIsaac's able to keep it in deep. A quick shot there from Noah Blanchard. Just misses on the short side of the net. Picking up down low now is Target. Target. Sends it around to the corner. Blanchard into assist him. He takes a bump. Centering opportunity didn't go the way that the Spartans wanted. Blanchard takes a bump now. Target with it. His shot goes off the side of the net. Target got it now. He loses it for Gander. Clearing opportunity. Jacob Hiscock knocked down at center. He plays it over. James Call with it now. Ahead to Target who lost it. Icing waved off. Off the backboards, come up on the side of the goaltender. He'll put his glove down on it for the whistle. 9.25 to go here in the first. Shots on net saying 6-4 in favor of Gander. Uh, excuse me, in favor of Gander. While the score clock indicates it's 3-0. A couple of quick goals here in the first minute by Gander. Bump down low. Puck going to be cleared down the ice by Stephenville now for icing. Nine minutes and 12 seconds to go. Concords win the draw. That was Canning who plays it back to the point. A shot from him there right in on net. Castillo made the save. Lost it and was went down in front of him, but they were able to clear it out from in front of him. Bouncing puck comes over the blue line out in the neutral zone where it's collected by Gander. They play it ahead. It's off the feet of Evan Heffernan. He kicks it ahead and a big neutral zone collision there.
Gander with it now with the holes up. They play it ahead. It goes right onto the stick. Number 44. That's Luke Kosh, it was. Kept in alive there by Hughes. Hughes with a point shot, loses it. Giving it back now for Gander as Reed Fowler. Fowler with it, shot in front. And a tip goes top corner. That tip come from Michael Canning. Chris, a great goal there. And Michael Canning earlier today named first star of the game in the Gander Concords game against the Holy Trinity Tigers. There's a clearing opportunity, can't quite get out. It's kept in by Concords number 17, Fowler. Gets it over to Canning and then he fights Twine. Spartans win that draw now. They'll bring it back. That's Liam Dutcher with it for the Spartans. Dutcher from the far side. It's shipped out in the neutral zone. Dutcher picks it up now in over the blue. Dutcher by the defender. Dutcher with a shot. What a save made by Tulk. The rebound was there and Brody Hogan puts it home. Spartans on the board. A great effort there by the Spartans as we watch this scoring affair. Dutcher this afternoon had another great game. Following up last night's three goal performance, Dutcher couldn't get it done. But of course, Stephenville's number 14, Brody Hogan was there to capitalize. Cuts Gander's lead to three. Chris, we're less than, we're less than eight minutes into this game and we've already gotten five goals. <laughs> My goodness, this should be a treat. Gander with a quick rush now, and a quick wrist shot there, goes into the glove of the goaltender. Easily able to stop play there for his team. 7.45 to go here now in the first period. 4-1 hockey game in favor of the Gander Concords. Pinson with the face-off win, plays it back to the point. Now it's over for Sergeant. Sur Sergeant shot right in on net. Easy save made there for Castillo. With it now, that's Alex Kellaway. Plays it down low for Pinson. Pinson tried to leave it there for Fowler. He gets it back over for Kellaway. Kellaway with a shot off the stick of the Spartans up into the mesh for a whistle. Chris, Kellaway has been playing a great tournament so far. And if we could almost give an all-star line to one team, I'm feeling that Kellaway Pinkson and Fowler would definitely be great candidates with how they've been performing so far. Spartans with a quick rush there. A shot from Zach Russell. He busts the water bottle of Castillo. It's 5-1 Concords. My goodness. Someone's going to need to buy Castillo a new, a new water bottle as the linesman goes to retrieve the parts. I got to say, Chris, a great goal as he just roofs it and destroys, I can't even call it breaks, but just destroys the water bottle. Castillo, wow. Chris, we're not even eight minutes in and Gander has already scored five goals on 13 shots. Played back down to the corner now. Gander quickly too, it comes back to the point for air. Kept in low. Around the boards now, rushing to it. That's Pittman. Pittman with it for the Concord, gets it up for Russell. Russell, bring it down low, shot on the sharp angle corner. Goes behind the net, kept in by Sargent. Down off the backboards. Russell, him pressuring. Vision on the wall. Tristan Bulin. His shot not able to clear, down low now. It goes to Yetman. Yetman centers it for Sargent with a move around. Sargent loses the puck. He's able to get a shot off to the pads. Another shot there from James Blackwood. And Castillo sees it and covers it up for the whistle, a much deserved whistle. We're gonna have another look at that goal. One of our cameras down in that end. Goes right in front and that backhanded, just beautiful goal right past Castillo. Clearing opportunity, bounces off and comes right out in front, so Castillo will take an easy whistle on that one. Now, Chris, myself and Cameron Gill earlier today covered the Gander Concords game against the Holy Trinity Tigers. This Gander team is lethal. 
I look over at their bench now, Nicholas, and a uh, coach of theirs, uh, Travis Winter, who was a former player of mine. So, I mean, I, I taught him all he knows. So, I mean, they, they've, <laughs> they've got to have some smart coaches on that bench. Oh, my. Did you teach him what kind of coach to be or not to be? Aha. <laughs> that is the question. Spartans looking to clear it out of their zone now. They'll bring it over to the far side in front of the bench. Rushing in now. That's Ethan Marsh in front. Couldn't get the shot off. Was Dutcher that time. Liam Dutcher with it now. From the top of the circle. Shot in. Loose puck. They find it back of the net. It's Brody Hogan again. From Liam Dutcher again. We are just in this insane scoring affair. What is on the go right now? It's five to two. We still have six minutes to go in the period. Dutcher with a great shot left there. It's Hogan in behind the defenders, able to take that one right off the pad. Talk, put it in the back of the net. Liam Dutcher, what a setup guy. He set up two of these goals already for this Stephenville Spartans team. And Brody Hogan, he's just the finisher. Absolutely. Dutcher, a good playmaker. Three goals in yesterday's game uh, against the Holy Trinity Tigers. All three of Stephenville's goals, actually. And uh, he's had a great season with Western Kings in the AAA League. Almost 50 points in, a, I believe it's 27 games. Just under 30 games. Fantastic season for him. Certainly someone for those, uh, if he decides to come into St. John's, certainly someone for those in the St. John's Junior Hockey League to keep an eye on. Absolutely. Neutral zone face-off here now, won by the Concords. It comes all the way back in their own end where they collected. They send it out in the neutral zone. The linesmen say it's fair, so it's turned over and back the other way, leading that charge is Reed Fowler. Fowler, he's got Pinson and Kellaway with him. Holding up below the goal line, plays it over behind for Pinson. Pinson centering opportunity, who couldn't be controlled there that time. Brandon Blackwood from the point, kept in alive by Kellaway. Pinson down low to Kellaway, kind of hopped over his stick that time. Back to the point from Blackwood. His shot got blocked. Another shot there. Castillo with it, the save. Pinson over for Kellaway. Opportunity there for Fowler on the rebound. Nice save made by Castillo. Spartans send it all the way back down ice. It's collected there by Nate Parsons. They're struggling to get it out here now. Some pressure from the Spartans. A bump in the corner. Jo Jordan Martin tying the guy up here as both teams looking to work that puck loose. But Martin doing a great job here on the forecheck tying that up so far. Our first penalty will come in this game now. Looks like it's going to go to Stephenville as it allows Sargent to start working off ice. He'll get it over. And Spartans touch it for the whistle. Four minutes and five seconds to go here now in the first. It's going to be Noah Blanchard. Two minutes for tripping. As Gander heads to the power play. Gander's power play earlier today, really, really strong. Against the Tigers, against the Spartans, I wouldn't expect any less. Shot blocked there, comes out in the neutral zone. Rushing back for it. This Gander, Evan Sargent with it now. Sargent working up ice. He's got the blue, drops it back. Zach Russell who sends it in low. Rushing in for there's Carter Yetman. Yetman plays it back. To the point. Russell to the wall. For Fowler. Fowler carries it down low. Fowler still with it now. Sends it down low to Sargent. Sargent with an opportunity there. The rebound is there, the puck is loose. The goaltender finally covers it for the whistle. 3.15 to go here in the first and a minute 10 left on the man advantage for Gander. Another great effort. This Gander Concord's offense really has not let up on the Stephenville 
team, it's just go, 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 go. Absolutely phenomenal. Back to the top now. Paul Hughes. Hughes over for Canning. Back to Hughes. To the wall. Down low. I believe it's Pinson with it. Pinson walking up around. He's at the half wall. He'll send it up top for Hughes. Hughes. A shot there. Save was made. Bounced up in front. Gander. Lose it. Back the other way now. It's Dutcher going in with it. Liam Dutcher holds up on the wall. Lose to get around one. Takes a bump there in the corner from the Concords. Puck comes loose with it now. Back the other way comes Gander. Paul Hughes to the far side. Centering opportunity there. It's in the back of the net. Just a tip in front from Alex Kellaway. Gets it by the goaltender. That's a power play goal for the Gander Concords, and they lead 6-2 with 2.18 to go in the first. I believe we're, well, we're going to see the Rogers TV replay first. As it goes in, Kellaway there just gets a beautiful, beautiful opportunity in front. Gets a stick on it. Very light, very delicate play there. Puts the puck in the back of the net, making the 6-2. We're not even out of the first period. My goodness, eight goals in the first period. This has got to be some sort of record. I will say, Chris, there's one there, there's one person I really feel bad for right now. That's the scorekeepers. They're certainly busy, that's for sure. <laughs> Spartans with it now in Concord's territory. Concord's... Tying them up and bumping them along the boards to try to get possession of it. With that puck now, that's Nate Pertons, Parsons, excuse me, re receiving some pressure from Target. Kyle Target loses it. Jordan Merton got it. He loses it. Comes back to the point for Liam McIsaac. Shot in on net and a save made there by Tull. 126 to go here now in the first. We're going to have another look. Gander goal as the replay guys are kept busy. Beautiful tip in front there as Kellaway puts it past Castillo. You know, 21 shots now in 13 and a half minutes. And that's just for Gander. Quick off the draw, the gang of their concourse is up on the stick of Kalen Layden. Layden going in now with a backhand opportunity, save made by Castillo. Centering opportunity there. Shot gets blocked in front. Loose puck. No one really knows where it's to, I don't think. But it comes back to the point for Sargent. He puts a shot in on net. That gets blocked. Another sharp angle shot there. That time it was from Michael Canning. Again, Castillo is tall in net. Racing down for Griffin Simon. Picked up by... Gander, they send it out in the neutral zone. Call it's up now ahead for Tristan Bulin. Bulin in over the line. Gander gets a stick on it, knocks it back out into the neutral zone. Racing back now for Gander. Michael Canning. Evan Heffernan. Sends the puck away just as quick as he does. He receives a hit. And Stephenville gets a stick on it, sends it down the ice for icing with 13.3 to go here in the first, Nick. Still time for another goal. Absolutely. We've certainly seen lots of them. Have we? 24 shots right now. I'm not very good at math, but 24 times three is a lot. Point shot there from Hughes, right into the glove of Castello. Gander on pace for 75 shots in this game. Chris, you and I have both called lots of games here this week so far. Uh, I think it's safe to say that this will probably be the most first period shots we've seen from any team. Definitely, yes. A shot there. Went off at the crossbar, up into the mesh for a whistle. 
So after one period of play, the Gander Concords lead this one by a score of six to two. After a brief two-minute intermission, we'll be back with third period, uh, excuse me, with second period coverage of this game. But before we do that, we'll switch it over to our scoring summary. So quickly, just 59 seconds into the first period, Alex Callaway got us quickly on the board there with a nice skull from Pinsom. Sergeant, of course, from Callaway as Callaway gets his second point less than three and a half minutes into this one. Uh, next in was Fowler following up for Gander again. Another quick goal there. Alex Callaway, his third point uh, in this first period. Pinson, his second. Now you saw the first bit of life from the Spartans at 7.03 in the first as Hogan gets a nice opportunity from Dutcher. And, of course, Dutcher getting that one from March. Then Canning for the Concords puts his first of the game in there. Fowler on the assist. Again, then Stephenville replied again. Hogan, his second from Dutcher, the setup man. Again, his second point of the game. And Russell from Yetman is going to be at 12.43 and then rounding out the period. Kellaway getting his second, his fourth of the tournament on the power play from Pinson and Layden. Now, Chris. We just talked for about a minute and 15 seconds on that scoring summary. I'll sum it up in a few words. Lots of goals. Very well said, Nick. Very well said. Just a quick break to get some water back now, folks, and we'll be back with the call for the second period. Way. Stephen Mill with the face-off win. They fire it down the ice, and it's going to be an icing call charged against the Spartans just six seconds into this second period. Chris, with the way this game is going, I don't think the Spartans can really afford to take many of those icing calls. Unnecessary ones, we'll say, Nick. You know, yeah, we'll, we'll just with some patience in the puck, you can easily have that red and dump it in. But back to come, they, they come the other way. Now it's Ethan March with it. He loses it as it's chipped off of his stick there. That was Paul Hughes doing that, picking it up for Gander. Now it's Zach Russell. They play it ahead. Concord's up through the neutral zone. They get the blue. Carter Yetman with it now. Picks it up behind the goal. Chipped in front. Receiving some pressure there from Liam McIsaac. Hogan with it. He's able to clear it out into the neutral zone. The far wall now. Sydney Pittman puts it back down Spartans territory. Dutcher over now to the defense of the Spartans. To the far side, intercepted at center ice. Spartans, or excuse me, Concords get it back on the stick of Paul Hughes now. Hughes gets it over for Zach Russell. Russell with a shot offside and an unnecessary shot in there on the goaltender. Just no need of that being up 6-2 to two in this game. Total unsportsmanlike. Coming in on that kind of call. You listen for the whistle. If you're going to shoot it, not on the goal. <laughs> A neutral zone faceoff. Coming away with it now that's Kyle Target. Target loses it. Bouncing puck. It's by defender. Shoots. And it's in the back of the net. Target kept following with that puck. He fanned on the first shot. It got lost in the feet of the defenseman of Gander. And really, no one knew where it was to until it was in front of the goalie. And he was able to just tap it in on side of him. We're going to have another look at this one now, Chris. Target goes in, bounces through there. There we go. Target getting the stick on it. Just squeaking it by the post. Ever so slightly, ever so nicely. Start back within three. Within three, exactly. And at this pace, the game may very well end up being close to the score that we saw in the Super Bowl a couple months ago. It could be, yes. I believe that's what we're on pace for here right now. Gander with it now. Coming back, Stephenville's home with a quick wrist shot there. The save is easily made there by Costello. 13-31 to go here now in the second. Shots, 25-11, kind towards. And they also lead on the score clock, 6-3. You know what they say, get some shots on that one might go in. You miss 100% of the shots you don't take, but at this point I think 100% of everyone's shots are gonna go in. Seems that way so far. Gander with it now, they cycle it up top. They move to the middle, someone loses their stick. 
off the boards and out. The goaltender bounces out to stop that play. And the net comes off its moorings. Been a bit of the story of the week. Especially when I'm calling it, I think there uh, was one game earlier today, the net had come off 13 times. I said, so that, that got to be frustrating, you know, for, for some people uh, just to be out on the ice, having great scoring opportunity, uh, and then eventually just have it taken away as another save made by Castillo after a point shot from Gandon. You know, Faceoff going to stay inside the zone now. The Spartans really looking to get something going here. You know, they they have put three goals past the Scander team. Big shot here from Jacob Hiscock, just misses on the first side. Tipped in by Sargent, sends it down low. Rushing to it now in the corner, Canning. He's going to bump the Spartans player. Getting it there now, that's Carter Yetman. He sends it to the far side again. Canning takes a bump this time. Tied up on the boards. Couple of players in now looking to work that free. It comes loose. Goes right over for Noah Mercer. Mercer loses it to Layden. Buell tried to clear it. Stepping in off the blue line shot. Just misses and ends up going short on the sh side of the net there. Buell looking to clear it. No can do. Condor, Concord step up with it. At the blue line now, they chip it off the wall. It goes down low. Comes loose. Jacob Hiscock has it. The fans are calling for a penalty there. Fortunately, the fans don't make those calls. It's the job of the referee. With it now. Leaves it at the blue line. A shot from Sargent. Right off the pads. With Costello. Ends up to the far wall. Clearing attempt there. Unsuccessful. Concords get it back. Zach Russell with it now. Russell with a shot. Ackles off the post. Back to the far side. It's for Burns. Burns sends it down low. Another shot there from the Concords. Save made by Costello. Out the neutral zone now. Paul Hughes has it. Plays it over for Zach Diamond. Back to Hughes. Hughes ahead. Over Russell's stick goes to the defense of the Stephenville Spartans. They're looking to get it out. They get it out in the neutral zone. They send it back down to the opposite zone. Diamond over for Hughes. Hughes ahead to Burns. He backhanded in, but took a little bump there in the neutral zone. Diamond keeps it in for the Concords. They lose it. It comes out now. Leading that rush is Ryan McIsaac. McIsaac with a shot high over the net. Collision on the board. Back the other way comes the Concords. Dumped in there by Burns. It was right on net. And Costello will cover it up for a whistle. 10.37 to go here in the first. Costello ignoring the scoreboard has actually played not a bad game so far. Absolutely not. Facing 31 shots in, through 20 minutes of play. You see the Gander Concords on the Rogers TV replay. Had him beat again, but you know, like I said, his best friend. Puck can't beat Iron. On the point, it's kept alive now for Gander with a sharp angle shot down low. A backhand opportunity there. Loose puck in front. My goodness, Costello with some nice saves here for the Spartans. Pinson down low with it. Gets it to Fowler. Clearing attempt. Able to be kept alive. Spurs tried to clear it out that time. They couldn't do so. Reed Fowler with it. Fowler's tied up on the boards. He's got a couple of Spartans on him. Coming in to help him now. That's Brandon Blackwood. Comes loose. Back to the point in Blackwood's feet. He finally gets it up for Fowler. Set down low. Pinson with it. It's by one. Pinson still with that puck. Drops it up top. A bouncing puck. Comes back to the point for Nate Parsons. Lays it to the corner. Reed Fowler with it. Comes back to the point for Brandon Blackwood. Sends it down low. Centering opportunity there from Pinson. There was no one to take the shot. Parsons sends it to the corner again. Pinson from down low. Works it up top. 
Pinson working towards the middle to send it off to the wall. Now with a shot there from Kellaway. That just misses. Black would send it in low again. Kellaway taking a bump. Still tying the puck up. Loose it comes. It's Dutcher with it now for the Spartans. Dutcher in the neutral zone. He's got Hogan with him. He's got Marks with him. Dutcher carries it down low. Takes a bump from the Concords. Puck turned over. Back the other way it goes. Off the shoulder of a Spartans player. Sent back out of neutral zone. Jordan Martin with it now. He loses the, the Pinson. Pinson in over. Picked up by Kellaway. Kellaway sends it into the corner. Concords with it. Backhanded. Opportunity. Spartans looking to get it on here now and clear it. James Call with it. Call loses it. To Yetman. Yetman tying him up. Into assist there now. That's Pittman it was. Sent down low to Yetman again. Centering opportunity to go the way they want. And Ryan McIsaac has it for the Spartans now. Takes a bump. Centered there for Michael Canning. Canning with the puck. Shot off the stick of a Spartans player up into the mesh for a whistle. With 8.07 to go here in the second period. Still a 6-3 hockey game in favor of the Concords. What a dominant shift from the Concords there, Chris. That's what you want to see in your players. Coming out, playing physical, offensive zone hockey for two minutes, getting off to the bench again. Just a great effort by the Concords. They win that draw. They send it back to the point. A shot there and a pad save made by Castello. Bumped on the boards. It's back for Jacob Hiscock. His shot in. Loose puck in front. It bounces over the net. Noah Mercer, first man to it. And Jordan Martin. <clears throat> Almost cleared it into the neutral zone. Blanchard gets it out here now. Carrying back is Jacob Hiscock. It's up to the blue line. Mercer turns it around. Mercer now going up on a rush here for his team. Mercer backhands it. Not able to be kept in from the point. Up into the mesh. That one went. So that face off is going to come back to the neutral zone here for, for the draw. Now, Chris, the Concords and the Concords fans both hungry for more. Yeah. The Concords players have not let up. The fans cheering as if this was a 3-3 three three game with two minutes left. I love it. Loose puck. Kander wins it. Play to Hughes. Hughes now sends it over. For, uh, that's Fowler with it. Reed Fowler holds up. Sends it down low for Pinson. Pinson behind the net. Pinson with by one. Pinson with a sharp angle shot. Save made by Costello. Great effort Effort there by Pinson. Very attempt. It's over the stick. Diamond. Sent ahead now for Callaway. Alex Callaway moving to the middle. A little too much there for it to get to Pinson quick enough. Callaway on the side of the net just put it across. Freeze. Back to the point now, a point shot from Hughes, misses on the far side. Diamond sends it down low again. Kellaway, centering opportunity for Fowler, shot made, and a save is made by Castello. Pinson with it in the corner, plays it to Kellaway, back to Pinson. Net off, it's Morgan, whistle goals, 6.21 to go. This is a, uh, honestly a great game of hockey. I'm really enjoying watching this. Despite it, seeing nine goals in the first period and a half, we uh, were definitely treated with uh, with a pretty good hockey game here. It seems like both teams have kind of settled in a little bit. The goaltenders have settled in a little bit. Nonetheless, I think the Concords are still playing our dominant style of hockey. March over for Dutcher now. Dutcher look, looks to put it up into the middle. There was no one there. He gets it back, though. Dutcher plays it over to Ryan McIsaac. McIsaac to the other D. I believe it's James Call. Moves it, shot in on it. Loose puck. Goes back over the goaltender. Going to be a penalty against the Spartans as the Concords carry it up ice. Michael Canning. Spartans finally touches. 
Let's see what the call is. Head, head contact. Head contact it is, says Gabe Brown, the referee. It's going to be a two-minute penalty by the looks of it. So, sitting now is going to be multi-goal scorer Brody Hope. Gander on the power play. They win the draw. They back to the point. It's for Paul Hughes. Hughes down to the half ball. Back up top. Walking towards the middle. He'll play it to Fowler. Back up top to Hughes. Hughes to Kellaway in the circle. Over for Canning and Canning puts it into the back of the net. It's a power play marker. And it's a 7-2 lead and the Concords. With the Concords leading 7-3, this is just the pace of play that they need to show in other games. Now this is their last round robin game. They will be going, we will be going into what we would know as the playoffs for the Trail of the Caribou Championship Series. Great pass there from Callaway. As Canning silently sat at the back door waiting for his chance. Just slides it on in. Back on their way, Concords win the draw. Hiscock over for Sargent, ahead. Left there now for Zach Russell. Russell going in over. He's got Koss with him. Shot from Russell, and it's in the back of the net. It's 8-3 now. Chris, we still have 25 minutes of hockey to go. Kudos to the game of Concords for not going to the bench on that play. But Russell coming in. The goaltender, Castillo, just didn't expect the shot there. He wasn't ready. Hard shot. High blocker, found the back of the net. They're gonna have a chat now. This, they're wondering about run time, I would say, but run time will not come into effect until the third. No, the, the run time will come into effect now. Okay. I thought it was the third, but it will be now. Off the glass, down Spartans territory. With it now. That's Luke Kosh. Kosh brings it up top. Spartans collecting back. They come now. Evan Heffernan with it. Dumps it down low. Picking up below the goal is Tristan Bueller. He loses it to get to Gander. Back the opposite way they come now. To the far side. Kosh, that kind of bounced over his stick, so he had to hold up a little bit before bringing it into the zone. Centering opportunity here now. They'll bring it to the middle of the shot there. Just goes off into the far corner. Kosh lays it down low. Backhanded there by Ladens. Another shot there, I believe it was from Sarge. It goes off the blocker into the corner. Ryan McIsaac. Kosh has it for Gander now. McIsaac pressuring Kosh. Loses his glove. You'll want to pick that up. They'll want to get a stick to the hands. Could be hurtful. Layden with it now. Layden loses it to Simon. Brings it out in the neutral zone. Gander. This guy. Caught in by Heffernan. Back to him now. Heffernan over for Bueller. Bueller dumps it over to the defense and sends it down deep. Rushing in for Brody Hogan. Gander. Pick it up. At the red line, but they lose it to Dutcher. Liam Dutcher. In over the blue. Carries it down the wall. Driving towards the net. Puck was loose there. So back to collect it in the neutral zone is Paul. He plays it over for Liam McIsaac. Bouncing puck. Hits off the Gander bench, I believe. We'll have another look here. Goal. As this one goes high. And almost destroys the second water bottle ball. I think as the should start leaving the water bottle on the bench. It might become costly. So a neutral zone face-off now. Gander wins it. Michael Canning off the boards. To the stick of Pittman. Pittman shot just as misses on the short side. Kept in at the point by Zach Dime. Spartans clear it out. No icing on the play. Mm -hmm. 
Racing back with him now, Michael Canning from Gander. Canning shot, bounces off the player and off the boards. Liam Dutcher with it. Plays it up in the neutral zone for Ethan March. March doesn't get it into the Gander in. Now it's going to be bodied by Dutcher. Dutcher with a shot from the top of the circle. Just goes off the pads of Tull. Loose puck here now. Back to the point. Liam McIsaac winds up, fires. Just misses on the far side. Canning collects it on the wall. Just laid it out there in a circle. That allows Gander to get it out. Helloway. Lost it there to Mercer, and he sends it back the other way. Down into the corner now. Kellaway. Over now for Fowler. Fowler sends it down low to Kellaway, back to Pinson, to Fowler. Fowler holding, loses it, pokes it. Pinson gets it back. Comes down low again. Kellaway picks it up behind the net. Ch kept out now, Jordan Mer Merton, excuse me. Was able to send it out all the way down. Kellaway picking it up in his own zone. Just 35 seconds to go here now in the second. Kellaway carries it in, takes a bump there from Blanchard. Centering opportunity, it's denied. Evan Heffernan racing up with him now, gets it in over the red and dumps it down deep in the gander end. Hughes avoids the player there to take a bump, but he comes away with the puck regardless. Skating up through the neutral zone now is Hughes. He'll dump it down. Picked up on the far side of the net by Blackwood, James Blackwood it is. A little bit of bumping going on down there in the corner, but that'll do it for the second period, folks. So after two periods of play, Gander takes an 8-3 lead to the dressing room. Shots 34-14 in favor of the Concords. go to break we'll take care of our second period scoring summary so starting it off there for the Spartans target got his first of the uh, tournament uh, bringing them back in within three but coming back quickly was Gander uh, Canning with his second of the night from Hughes and Kellaway and then Russell with his third game as uh, third goal in the tournament excuse me extends the lead to five which is where we shifted into run time Shots only nine to four in that period. However, great opportunities on both ends. Gander still out shooting as far as I'm concerned, out playing uh, Stephenville as well. Absolutely. So folks, that's gonna do it here for the second intermission. We'll be back uh, in about uh, 11 minutes with the call for the third uh, period. Stay tuned, we'll be back shortly.
back with third period coverage of this game between the Gander Concords and the Stephenville Spartans. Just waiting for the last couple of seconds to come off of the clock here. Not sure why we can't delete it, but nonetheless, we will wait for that to count down. this time for us to be able to start play underway Spartans win it new goaltender in it for them now it's Noah Belovo Belovo had a great performance this morning was awarded the Royal Newfoundland Regiment player of the game award in the neutral zone now sent back out there Sergeant chips it ahead up to the stick of Canning. Canning sets it in the zone. Stephenville brings it back the other way. Now that's Liam Dutcher. Dutcher loses it. It's turned back over. Back the other way. Now kept in and sent in by Canning. It goes right to the glove of Belleville. And he'll keep it in there for a whistle. So both teams, teams excuse me, with some line changes. As they come back to do the faceoff now, it's going to be on Belleville's right. 19 minutes left here now as you'll see the clock is in run time now that's because of a five goal spread Paul Hughes has it for Ganner is able to send it out in the neutral zone turned over picked up by Liam McIsaac McIsaac loses it to Kellaway Kellaway drops it up top for Pence and he couldn't keep that one to the stick it comes back to the point kept in there by Zach Diamond Diamond's got it back now he fires it down deep Picking it up below the goal. Now that's Kellaway centering opportunity there. Fowler didn't get the shot off. Spartans coming back the other way now. It's Blanchard. Blanchard gets by Diamond. Shot goes off Hughes' stick. Bounces up in the air. Concords pick it back up. They come up ice. It's Fowler. He puts it up to Pinson. Couldn't quite control it. Icing going to be waved off though because of the tip. Pinson pressuring Liam McIsaac with it. Pinson gets it back. Holding up. He's trying to Michigan and he does it. Oh my goodness. Adam Pinson with the clinic and the Michigan goal. Excuse me while I pick my jaw up from the floor. We just had a Michigan. We're going to go to the Rogers TV replay right there. Picks it up right there and it hits the Michigan oh my goodness fans in front of us calling for the replay again but I'm sure that will be one played for quite some time we're going to show it again at the next uh, stoppage just because that's impressive back underway Blackwood has it now he plays it on the wall it goes to Carter Yetman Racing up here now with it, that's Zach Russell. Russell, hauling to the side. Yetman, sharp angle shot, goes off the skates of a Spartans player, comes back to the point. They're able to keep it in. Canning, with it on the wall now. He gets it over for Pittman. Pittman with the shot, save made there by Bellavo. He comes out, going to be an ice. Not quite. The goalie comes out and plays. Goaltender goal nullifies that. Battling for possession now with it. Brandon Blackwood. Blackwood plays it up. Russell carries it down low again. Russell over the wall. Check there by Mercer. Back the other way. It's Dutcher with it for the Spartans. Dutcher towards the middle. Shot. Just misses on the far corner. 
Spartans look to get control. With it now, that's Sargent. Sargent plays that off. Off the glass, out in the neutral zone, collected by Dutcher here now. Dutcher for the Spartans. Will carry down below his own, his own goal. Almost loses it there. That was a four check around him from Gander. Stick in the wrist. Not sure how there's no hooking call there. My goodness. Probably the easiest penalty they would have called in this game, but I guess they said no. Dutcher gets it back at the top of the circle, loses it. Gonna fight to get that back again. Chipped out by Gander. That interfered with a little bit. Referees didn't decide to call that one either. I guess the whistles are away here now. They want to get off the ice, and I would say a lot of people do in a 9-3 game. I mean, 9-3 and counting, I should say. Kellaway with it. Loses it. Gets it back. Kellaway tries to center it. Sargent back to Kellaway. Up to Sargent. Sharp angle shot. Save made by Bellevue. Spartan's going to come away with it here now. Getting it back is Blanchard. Blanchard, it's tied up on the wall. He takes a bump there from Kellaway. They play it ahead. Icing's waved off. Down low is that puck now. On the side of the net, they try to center it out there. That was number 77, Jordan Merton, but it got denied. Back the other way now from the Concords. Centering time there. Kellaway in the circle with it. Sends it down low to Pinson. Pinson with a wraparound attempt. Failed. Comes to try it again on the opposite side. Has to move out to the far wall. Back the other way now. Ter Kyle Terry with some moves to get away from Pinson. Picked up ahead. In over the line now. He loses it. Kellaway, centering opportunity, it's in the back of the net and it's Pinson's goal. Beautiful goal there from Pinson, makes this 10-3 game for the Gander Concords with 13.35 left to play here. Is the Concords gonna go off for the change? Thirteen twenty-two to go here now. It's a 10-3 hockey game. Sent ahead there now. Russell up to Layden. Layden with a shot from the wall. Pad save made by Bellavo. It's sent back to the point. Hughes gets it into the middle. It gets separated. Out into the neutral zone now. Diamond has it, plays it over for Hughes, who carries it back in his own zone, turns with it. Off the wall, Diamond bumps Heffernan and sends him down after a little shoulder on shoulder there. Back the other way, now come the Concords. It's Layden with it. Layden shot is off the side of the net. And it's going to be Carey. We'll have that replay once again, folks, of the Michigan goal that you see here. Yeah. Pinson Vincent behind the net, Chris, and just puts it right past Bellavo. Not every day do you get to call a Michigan goal. Definitely not. Back to the point now. Wow. Gander with a quick shot there from the point off the pads, down off the backboard. Dutcher with it now for the Spartans. He carries it down low, still in control of the puck. Liam Dutcher. High up in the air, will send it to the far side. It's up onto the stick of Evan Heffernan, I believe it is. No, it was Ethan March. He got interfered with a bit. Concord to send it out into the neutral zone. Just a matter of the players trying to kill some time off the clock here now. March. And off the boards, out in the neutral zone. Knocked down by Hogan. He sends it back down Concord's territory. Behind their goal now, it's picked up by Brandon Blackwood. Hogan to March. Hogan collects it back. Plays it over for Dutcher. Plays it down low to March. March takes a bump there. From Canny. From the point. Big plays there amongst the players. McIsaac. 
He didn't like that hit. He's going to go on back to the bench for a change. Kept in on the blue line by Gary. March with a shot, just misses on the far side. Looking it up now, that's Ryan McIsaac. It's sent down low. Dutcher with it. Going to work off the wall. It'll send it to the point for Gary. He kicked it back in. Picking it up now, it's Gander. That's going to be Canning with it. Dumps it down deep. Ryan McIsaac comes to the corner. Dutcher picking it up. Looking to skate up ice with it. Shot goes out the leg of a Concord's player, but it's picked up by number 11, Blanchard, Noah Blanchard. He's still got the puck on his stick. Shot there is off the blocker. Centering opportunity there, no one there to collect it. Call, keeps it alive on the blue line, gets it to the far side where Blanchard collects it. Blanchard takes a bump there from Callaway. Turned over, Pinson's coming back the other way now. Gets it to the far side, Fowler just sends it in, just past the defenseman call. Fowler with a sharp angle, shot goes off the side of the net. He's got it back. Fowler with some patience towards the goaltender. And he tips that up into his glove for the whistle. Now we're going to have a look at Pinson's second goal of the period. As he sets himself beautifully out front and just pops it over the blocker of Noah Bellavo. We'll get the ice level angle there. Kind of the same spot. Put that Michigan goal early. Bouncing puck off of the draw. Loose in front, they save made there by Bellavo. Two players come in tangled here now as their cages are locked together. Very often you see that happen, but nonetheless it's given the fans something to laugh about. 10-3, Michigan goal, eight goal first period. Cages get intertwined. This has been a pretty fun game. Despite the story, yeah, it's, it, it's been a, a decent game to call, that's for sure. Shot from the point off the pads of Belvo, steers it to the corner, picking it up there now is James Blackwood. Blackwood carrying it around. <laughs> Diamond not able to keep it in. Taking it on the Shot there from Kyle Burns. Easy save from the goaltender. Burns loses it to Russell and it's turned over. Burns got it back. Pressure. Battling for possession here in the neutral zone now. Diamond comes away with it for the Concords. He'll pass it over to his D partner. It's two. Burns in the neutral zone. Off the boards and down deep into the Spartan zone. Into the corner. It's picked up by Ryan McIsaac. Brody Hogan has it now. He'll chip it down deep. Sent back the other way. Skating with it now is Luke Kosh. Kosh running towards Nick. Kosh shoots, scores five hole. 7:20. I think there are a few people here, Chris. I think there's a few people in this building who would not mind if that run time started to run about twice as fast as it already is. For a number of years, the Gander Concords came into this tournament as a team. It was like, oh, nice to see Gander in here. But this year, they're really coming in. They're showing that they are not to be messed with. They've, sh they've proven time in and time out, whether that be earlier today in their game against Holy Trinity in a 4-2 win, whether that be last night against Exploits Valley in their win against them. It was 5 to nothing there, and now 11-3. to They have scores. They have firepower. They have a great defense, and they got good goaltending. I wouldn't be shocked to see Gander on Sunday. Will we see them Sunday afternoon? It's a possibility, I think. Absolutely, Nick, a possibility. Uh, but then again, you never know, you know, as, as we move into later tonight, into tomorrow, uh, it, it's these elimination games. So, you know, take a shift off. It gives momentum to another team. Things can change so quickly, no matter how good of a round robin 
uh, you know, standings you had. Anything can change when you move into these eliminations because it's, it's not a double life, it's one and done. Exactly. I mean, even just switching sports for a second, you go over to basketball. Miami Heat only the sixth team in NBA history to knock off the number, a number one seed. And eight defeated the one. In here, you're only going to see the one versus four matchups, but still, oftentimes between those one and fours, there's a big discrepancy in skill. And, and it's a long breakaway, you know. Kosh came in along the wall and just tricked Belabo. Thought that he was going to keep going, either pass or behind the net. But Belabo just said, eh, I'm here. And he put it in. Good shot from the point there. Belabo hits it with the blocker, sends it up into the mesh for a whistle. Another angle here of the Kosh goal. Pretty well from the goal line, just back uh, right through the five hole. Really nice goal there from Kosh. Under five to go now. Diamond keeps it alive on the blue line, and Alex Kellaway loses it and has to come back out into the neutral zone. Play quickly ahead now. Fowler couldn't get a stick on it in time. Going to be an icing call here with 4.43 to go now in the third period. 11-3 in favor of your Gander Concords. Shots are 47 to 15 for the Concords. Definitely a very strong performance from the Gander squad. You know, I, again, it's it's going to be tough to beat these Concords. Holy Trinity came closest. Back the other way now, chipped off the boards and down. Concords come back now with a stretch pass up into the neutral zone. He's got the blue. Going to hold up here now. We're bound to three minutes and 20 seconds to go. Evan Heffernan sends it down Concords territory. It comes back to the following point for Ryan McIsaac. He sends it up. Icing will be the call. Faceoff going to come down deep into deep into the zone now. Faceoff won by the Spartans. They're hit along the boards, and we're going to have a penalty call. Head contact the call. That's going to go on Gander's number six. It's Kyle Burns. He'll sit two after the referee Fitzgerald. Make that signal, two for head contact. That'll pretty well do it for this game as well. I can't see any kind of... Two and a half minutes and you need nine to win us. Eight to I, force overtime. I don't know. If we were back in the first period, maybe. <laughs> may, may, maybe with a field goal and a try, you know, you get there quicker. Yes, get your touchdown, grand slam. Someone give Aaron Judge a call. Played over. McIsaac with it now. All the same, though, Chris Stevenville had a great game this afternoon. Very exciting win against, against Expo Valley. And they only lost on a penalty shot with zeros on the clock. Uh, they threw a stick on a breakaway with about a second left. The referee said, no, we're at zero. We're not going to drop it. You score, you win. You don't, we're going overtime. Dutcher with a quick drive now towards the net, loses the puck. Hogan wasn't there to finish at that time, as we've seen a couple of times in this game. Call with it now. James Call. 
Up to Hogan, to Dutcher, to the far side to call now. Dutcher from the top of the circle will work, work. He'll leave it there for March. At the top of the circle, he fires it right in on net. Save made by Tulk. A minute 15 to go here. Minute 10, that'll just keep running. And you'll see the head contact penalty here now behind the play. Burns comes in, comes up a little bit with the shoulder and the elbow, getting the contact to the head. And uh, gonna have to sit out now for the next 20 some odd seconds. Two over in front. Hulk did make a save there as I heard it hit off of the pads. Didn't see much of this. There's a crowd in front of him. Kellaway, my goodness, he just set Noah Mercer down. Oh my. Sat him down, he put him to bed. <laughs> At least there's no one hurt, that's the main thing. Amen to that. Sent down. Icing is waved off. Concord just rimming around the boards. Pinson chips it out into the neutral zone. Gary sends it in. It's going to be offside as the contact was made. And that's going to do it, folks. We're going to have a look at that hit. Beautiful one here. And boom! Good afternoon, good evening, and good night. That's going to be the final here as well. 11 to 3. The Gander Concords. Slay the Stephenville Spartans. We'll be right back with a Rogers T. Actually, you know what? Yeah, we're going to do that now. We're going to do our Rogers TV three stars. No shocker, I'm sure, to our viewers at home. Clean sweep for the Concord. Sergeant, great game back on defense. Put up a couple points. A nice goal earlier today as well. But Alex Kellaway and Adam Pinson, both with two goals, three assists. Pinson's two goals coming in the third period. One of them, I would probably say will be the goal of the tournament executing the Michigan beautifully uh, and if I, I'll say to our producers if we do have another if we can run that replay one more time if we still have a shot of the Michigan goal we're gonna we're gonna put that up now in a minute but Pinsent your first star Kellaway your second we're gonna be with the replay on the Michigan goal in a moment Nick just looking at the standings here now uh, Gander now uh, through three games. They'll finish here at a plus 14. Absolutely great effort. And you'll just see here, pins and, I mean, wow. We're going to go have another look closer down to the goal line. Pins and just picks it up. He has it. And just, wow. And it's time now for the Royal Newfoundland Regiment players of the game. And it's going to be Hogan for Stephen Mill. Hogan, he's got a couple of goals here that were beautifully set up yeah, from Dutcher. Had a great game. Dutcher as well with a great game. Got to give the honorable mention to him there uh, as well. <laughs> Stephen Mill going to finish this one 0-3 now. They will be facing a first-place team in Company C. We'll be uh, waiting to see the results now as to who they're facing and have that combination. The Trail of Caribou series for the female We'll start Player of the game Actually, for the Gander right Concord is, is number 10, Adam Pinson. Be taking on the of Spartan. And uh, it's Adam Pinson getting uh, the Royal Newfoundland Regiment Player of the Game. Uh, a fantastic game by Pinson. And again, executing a Michigan goal. We would like to thank all our sponsors. For well, folks, Nick could probably want to stay here all afternoon talking about that Rogers Michigan TV goal, but we're going to get ready for the next John game Bradley. coming up here. That's going to do it for us on the call of this one. Thanks for tuning in. We'll throw it over now just to our scoring summary quickly before we get off of the year. Kellaway uh, got on the board here with a point and assist from Pinson, Sargent, and Kellaway. Fowler, Kellaway, and Pinson for the Concords, and then Hogan got late one there for the Spartans. Canning followed up another one there from Fowler. Hogan got another one back for the Spartans. Russell and Callaway in the first. As we mentioned, folks, that's going to do it for us here this afternoon. We'll be back shortly with some more coverage of this Royal Newfoundland Regiment Memorial High School Hockey Tournament. Thanks for tuning in. Have a great afternoon.
goodbye. I'm back here now with Gander Concord's captain, Adam Pinson. Tonight, two goals, three assists, and an 11-3 dominant victory uh, over the Stephenville Spartans. First off, walk us through that game. Well, the schedule didn't help the Spartans very much. They had to play almost back-to-back, -back, so I give them credits for keeping it close to start with. Uh, off rip, we came out with speed. We, we wanted that. We had high intensity. It was a... Uh, we were hard on them, and then we just started scoring off rip. We had six shots, I think three goals. We were burying our chances. It was a great victory for us. Now, one of the stories of the game came off of your stick, something I certainly talked about lots up in the broadcast booth. The first time we've seen it in this tournament, first time I think I've seen it in person, you pulled off the Michigan. How did that one feel? And, oh. do, and, and how much do you practice that? Every practice at the end, I'm just there with my stick, just doing Michigans. But that's the first time I've pulled it off in game, so it feels so good. I've tried it probably 15 times this year and haven't got it. I hit the crossbar last weekend with it, so it feels so good to finally get it. It's incredible. Now, we'll be able to watch that replay back on Rogers TV and RogersTV.com. Uh, congratulations on the win. You guys went 3-0. Uh, we talked a little bit about this week up in the broadcast booth, how Gander used to come in and it was like middle of the pack team, not exactly a contender. We see you guys as a very solid contender finishing the week at the top of company D3-0. and uh, Talk us through the level of competition you guys have played in this year and how it feels to be on the top so far. Well, yeah, this year was a lot different. We played a lot more games throughout the year, so I think our team's a lot closer, a lot together. and. Uh... We're deep. We're a deep team. I think we can roll our lines and have a good chance in this tournament. Going 3-0 to start it was incredible. It will put us in a good position for tomorrow to keep moving on, hopefully. Last question for now. You are on a line with Kellaway uh, and uh, your other line mate, number 17. Uh, how does it feel to have the two of them uh, out with you? It's incredible. Me and uh, me and Alex Kellaway played together all year, and we, uh, we did really well with it this year. And Reed, 
Reed Fowler is a really good contribution to us. He plays off us really well. He got a lot of speed, a really good shot, and he's good at burying his chances, so it feels really good. Congratulations on the win. Thank you very much. That's going to do it for this game, folks. 11-3, the final score. Gander Concords beat the Stephenville Spartans. We will be back shortly uh, for the next game here on Rink B. You are tuning in to Rogers TV live coverage of the Royal Newfoundland Regiment Memorial High School Hockey Tournament.
Good evening, folks, and welcome to the Paradise Double Ice Complex for this evening's game against the Marystown Clippers and the Mount Pearl Senior High Huskies. Should be in for a decent treat of hockey here this evening. About to get underway now as the anthem is played. The referees are set to go. The officials for today's games, the referees are Christian Daw and Leah Rideau. Linesman Kyle Dunn and Corey Drake. So Clippers have a win and a loss. Huskies, one win. So the winner of this will move into second place in the division. Right off of the draw, just seven seconds in. A quick shot there from the Hussies. That was number 91, Jacob Kosh. A goaltender, Peter Lavoie of the Clippers. Easily sees that one through for the whistle. 14.53 to go now. Face-off won by the Clippers. Played around on the boards. It's picked up. Able to get it out in the neutral zone. Intercepted there by Patrick Hanrahan. And he got pick, pocket picked there by Ryan Loveless. Loveless with it now for the Huskies. Plays it off to the far boards. Icing waved off. Played around again by Ryan Moulton. Clippers get it out. They lose it. Picked up in the neutral zone. That's Connor Hussey with it now. Hussey. Driving towards the net, intercepted off the puck there by Ryan Moulton. Picked up in the corner. Clippers with it, not enough to get it out, keeping it in on the blue line is Loveless. He got Pock Bigot back the other way, now comes the Clippers. Quick shot in on Colin Silver. He easily sees that one through for the whistle. So both sides now with an official shot registered on net. Just a minute, seven seconds into this first period. Still scoreless, we are. Face off to Silver's left. Huskies win it. Played around the boards there by Karen Cutler. Comes out in front of the Mount Pro Senior High net. They're able to clear it out. Knocked down in the neutral zone. Play intercepted. It's in the Clippers zone. Chipping it off the boards. Trying to get it deep there. That's Kyle Burton. Backhanded opportunity. Noah Seymour couldn't get a reach to the puck. He takes a bump on the boards but sends it down low to Burton. Wrap around attempt. Burton scores. Kyle Burton getting the Mount Pearl Senior High Huskies on the board 
just a minute 40 into this first period with a nice wraparound attempt there to get it by Lamar. And it's Huskies who strike first. Back at center for the draw again. Huskies win it. It's played back to their defensive end. Off the boards and out. Picked up in the neutral zone by Noah Ryan. Sends it down deep. Stepping in now, Ryan Mould. His shot towards net. Almost got deflected by Rutgazer, but that just misses on the short side now. Players battle for possession down low. Picking it up there is Rutgazer for the Clippers. Shot over towards net. Doesn't quite get onto the goaltender. Rutgazer on the blue line now. Chips it off the board. Sends it down deep. Wrapped around the boards. Clippers. It'll come back to the point there. So Noah Ryan. He steps in. Keeps it alive. Ryan down below the goal now. His wraparound attempt. Silver makes the save. With it now, that's Adam White. White chips it deep into the end. Back the other way, now come the Clippers. A nice move there to avoid the hit. The shot from the top of the circle, it goes through the pads of Silver, but he's turned clear of the net, so a nice shot there from Patrick Hanrahan. And Silver been in his crease, it probably would have been five hole in the back of the net in the tie game, but nonetheless, we're coming back the opposite way now. Okay, what a nice opportunity there from Mount Pearl. It's turned over. Clippers get it in, but it quickly gets turned back the other way. It's Huzzy. Huzzy looking to split the D. A nice play there by the Clippers. Doesn't allow Huzzy to take the puck with him. That was from Liam Hanrahan. Around the boards now. Back to the point. It's to Adam White. Picked up. Connor Huzzy tried to send it across the crease. Kept on the blue line by Huzzy. It's finally out in the neutral zone. A big hit there as number 81. But Mount Pearl Senior High steps up and lays the hit. In the corner. Up to the wall. Nani one. Kosh with it now. Kosh gets by Hanrahan. Kosh with a sharp angle shot. Save made. Bouncing puck there. Kosh to the far side. Where it's picked up by Brenton. Brenton puts it up top. Point shot. Blocker save made by Lebois. Sent down to the corner. Out for getting it now is Nicholas Murray from Marystown. Kept in on the blue line once again. By Mount Pearl. It comes out in the neutral zone this time. Didn't quite find it. No, they couldn't, but it's up now and on the stick. Counter Huzzy again. Driving from the circle. Top corner, Huzzy score. A nice cross, crease there. Adam White up to Connor Huzzy, I believe it was. And he's able to pick the far corner of that Clippers. And then it was to see the Rogers TV. Huzzy picks top corner there over Lavoir's shoulder in the back of the net. It's 10 nothing. Mount Pearl Senior High. 10 minutes to go here in the first period. Out of the zone. It's carried out from Marystown. Ryan Dominey circles back in his own zone. Backhands it up the wall. Tried to get it up to Philip Murray, Murphy, excuse me. He couldn't quite control it. It's brought back down in the Marystown end now. A collision there amongst players. Back the other way now comes Mount Pearl. With it, that's Noah Seymour. Seymour brings it out into the neutral zone. Plays it over to the far side. It's knocked down. Carried in, right in, and Lamar will come out for an easy save. 9.26 to go here in the first period. Shots are 4-3 in favor of the Huskies.
Hoskies win the draw. Quickly with a dear now. It's number 78, I believe. Paul Freeman, 79 it was. Back the other way comes Mary's Town now. Rutgazer loses it to the Huskies. He's going to look to pick it up on the wall. It comes out in the neutral zone. Huskies have it now. Mary's Town gets it back. Rushing up with it. That's Patrick Hanrahan to the far side. It's over to Tyler Crocker. Dumps it to the far corner. Allows Malpro Senior Eye some time to collect it. They come on the breakout now. Leading that rush is Zach Young. Young gets by the defenders. He tries to hit him. Young all by himself here now. He's allowing Crocker to collect it and a hit up to Rutgazer. Turned over. Well, Mount Pearl Senior High collects it. It's Zach Young with it now on his backhand. Centering opportunity there. Steers to the corner. Huskies with it on the wall. They send it down low. Russell with it for the Huskies. Even on his backhand. He'll switch off with his partner there. He takes a bump from Noah Ryan of the Clippers. He'll send it around the wall. Rutgazer tried to clear it out. Stepped up on a hit from there was Adam White. Off the far boards. It allows Liam Hanrahan to get to the puck. Steered out into the neutral zone. Huskies coming back with some numbers now as they caught Mary's Town on a change. Ryan sat his player down there as he tried to get through him with the shoulder. Ryan gets it back, brings it across the front of his net, off the hut, a glass, out into the neutral zone. Alex McDonald, clearing opportunity there, successful, but Liam Hanrahan fires it back down into the Huskies' territory. Mount Pearl Senior High with it now. They'll turn to protect the puck. Up ahead. McDonald didn't see it there. Getting it back now. As the senior high player Evan Brenton loses an edge, goes down. Comes back. Clippers, play intercepted there. Turn back over, back the other way now. Ryan Loveless steers it out to the neutral zone. Liam Hanrahan for the Huskies now. Goes to the far corner, dumps it and goes for a change. Huskies collected now. Run away with it, it's number 12 for the Huskies. 91, Jacob Kosh with a shot there. Love save made. Clearing attempt, unsuccessful. Good opportunity here. Ryan Loveless backhands it to the far side over the cosh. Shot right in front. Hussey almost had his second here. Loose puck in front of Lavoir, but he gets it under him and covers it up for the whistle. 6 one to go here in the first period. Mount Pearl Senior I Huskies leading 2-0 over the Marystown Clippers. And we'll have a replay of that scramble here down in front and Lavoir keeping sharp for his team there denying the Huskies any further advancement on the scoreboard. Huskies win the draw quickly it's played over for Karen Cutler who carries it out into the neutral zone quickly up ahead now he got it to Cole Freeman goes down after the collision here between a couple of players getting it back for Mary's town now that's Rutgazer Loses it back in the neutral zone now. It's collected. Seymour takes a bump there from a Clippers player. Fair wall now. Noah Ryan plays it over in front of his bench in Marystown. Not set yet. They backhand in the zone. Huskies offside. So they touch up on the blue line. Dumped deep into the Marystown in. To the wall. Rutgazer trying to clear it out. Kept alive, though, by Noah Seymour of the Huskies. To the corner. Where it's picked up. To the wall. Chip ahead. Far side. No one there. Go back to the Huskies again. Racing with it this time for Mount Pearl Senior High. 
There's Kieran Cutler. He'll put a shot in on Lamar. He'll easily cover that one up for the whistle. Four minutes and 48 seconds to go here in the first period. Still 2-0 in favor of the Huskies. Shots now reading 8-3 for the Huskies. Face off one by Mount Pearl Senior High. It comes back to the point there for McDonald. His shot goes in towards net. A loose puck there in a high slot. No one can get a quality shot in towards the goaltender. As it comes out, out in the neutral zone now. It's collected by Mount Pearl, uh, excuse me, by Marystown. They send it deep down into the Huskies territory. Clearing attempt failed there for the Huskies. They try to center it. Silver able to get a little bit of his blocker or his scoop out there to separate the pass from going into the slot. Senior high Huskies with it now. They play it to the half wall. Couldn't control that puck. It's turned over by Marystown. Kept in on the blue line. By Liam Murphy after he took a collision. Allows the Huskies to regroup and come back to the opposite end. Leading a charge here now for them. It was number 26. Brody Wright. And the bar with another nice save for his team. Down below the goal now. Huskies send it up to the stick of Connor Hussey going in. Hussey towards the net, backhands, it's in the back of the net, and he has two in the first period. Connor Hussey. We'll get that replay if we can. And here it comes, the Rogers TV replay of Hussey moves and goes to the backhand again and gets it by Lebois. 3 0 Huskies, 3.29 to go here in the first period. Marystown wins the draw. Quickly chips it out to the neutral zone and ahead. Stepping off the line is Ryan Loveless. Hussey gets it in over the line again. Drops it back. Turning now. Sends it down low where it got picked up and by Landon Drake. Mount Pearl with it. Jacob Kosh tries to center it to Hussey. Kevin Brenton backhands it to Kosh on the wall. He steps out towards the middle in the slot. Taps it down there. Hussey takes it out, goes high slot. It gets deflected up into the ceiling for a whistle. Two minutes and 45 seconds to go here in the first period. A lot of the play has been controlled by Mount Pearl Senior High here. Back the other way comes Marystown now. With it is number 14, Patrick Hanrahan. He had a shot there to just miss on the far side. Kept alive by Liam Hanrahan on the blue line and sent down low. Tyler Crocker rushing for He tried to put it out there into the center. No one able to get it there as the goaltender steered it off to the side. Back the other way now comes Hussey. Hussey going in on a breakaway on Lavoir. Shot off the crossbar up into the mesh for the whistle. Faceoff going to come outside into the neutral zone. Two minutes and 11 seconds to go. And we'll have that Hussey breakaway again. He just works out there with some energy. Going on his forehand this time. And that results in a going off of the crossbar. And had a play. Racing to it now. Jake Sims. Ahead into the neutral zone. To the stick of Kyle Burton. Back collecting it in the Clippers zone is Noah Ryan. Played back to the point. Kept alive by Kieran Cutler. He sends it down low. He's on the opposite wall now. Marystown able to get it out. Hope check there by a Huskies player. He loses his stick, but he gets it back. In the corner now. Liam Hanrahan. Mount Pearl gets it back. 
Paul Freeman lost it. Kept alive by Kieran Cutler once again on the blue line. Marystown to the opposite wall, gets it off the boards and out into the neutral zone. Clippers, the collision there, Nicholas Manning. Hit down deep, Huskies territory. Back to collected is Jake Sims. Sims with it now. We're in the last middle play here into the first. Played over to the other side by Burton. Reaching for the puck and turned over. Marystown coming back now. Dropped up top. A nice opportunity there, but it gets sent out into the neutral zone again. High sticking. It will be the call, so no penalty, just a high stick to puck being called against Mount Pearl Senior High. So the faceoff will stay in their defensive zone with 40.9 seconds left here on the score clock. Shots are 11-4 in favor of Mount Pearl Senior High. A little bit difficult here as I'm having to go back to my papers pretty often looking for the uh, names of the players here. When players don't have name bars on their jersey, it does make our job as uh, announcers a little difficult. So you'll have to bear with me throughout the game as I'm going to be looking back and forth to ensure I do try my best to get people's names right. There's always going to be mistakes made, but nonetheless, I will give it my best effort. Steered down into the Clippers zone. Racing for it there now. And back out into the neutral zone. Rushing forward is Liam Murphy of the Clippers. He's going to bring it down. He'll hold up. Turns and sends it up the wall, but that's going to do it for the first period, folks. So after one period of play, the Clippers have a 3-0 lead over the uh, Marystown Clippers. Excuse me, I think I said the Clippers have a lead, but it's the Mount Pearl Senior High Huskies with the lead. 3-0 over the Clippers. Shots 11-4 in favor of the Huskies. We're going to have a quick two-minute intermission and we'll be back with second period coverage of this Royal Newfoundland Regiment Memorial High School hockey game. As we mentioned, a quick intermission, and it has been, and we're back underway here now for the second period. So the defenseman there from Mount Pearl, uh, for, excuse me, from Marystown. A little bit confused as where the puck was to that time as he lost it in his feet. But they get it back. Sent there now. Sharp angle shot. It goes off of the post, as we could hear up here in the broadcast booth. Knocked down in front there by James Mitchell. Around the net, it's picked up by Mount Pro Senior High. They try to center it. Ryan Loveless was rushing to it that time. Back the other way, now comes Mount Pro Senior High. Patrick Hanrahan tries to get it over to Rutgazer. Couldn't control the pass. It's knocked back out in the neutral zone. And reach James Mitchell there. Not enough to steer it back up. Loveless with it now. Takes a bump in the corner. Clippers send it to the opposite side. And back. There's going to be no icing on the play, though. Loveless with it. Ryan Loveless ahead. Goes up to Jacob Kosh now. 
Hash with a little bit of low drive towards the net. Shot, misses on the far side. Back to the point, it's Hussey with it. Leaves it there, drops it up for Kosh. Kosh working to the circle. Tries to get it over in the center, there's no one there. Marystown, get it out, they chip it off the boards. It's in over the senior high Huskies blue line, but it's turned over and back the other way quickly comes the Huskies. Loses it, looking to get it back here, and they do. Rutgazer sends it around the boards, but it's picked up. The Huskies with another turnover there, carry it out. By the Clippers. Clippers in now over the Huskies' blue line, but they are deemed to be offside. 13.05 to go here in the second period, an offside call against Marystown, so we'll have a neutral zone face-off just outside the blue line. Face-off won by Marystown. They fire it down, deep into the Husky zone. They're there to collect it quickly. They look to play it around. Huskies, or excuse me, Clippers try to center it. Out in the neutral zone, collected by Hanrahan, fires it back down there. And the Clippers, I don't think, knew they were offside as they touched that play. And the whistle goes. So we'll wait to see where we're going to bring this face off. Okay, it'll be just outside, so it'll be just a, an offside call. Face-off is in now over. And Ryan Domini out in the neutral zone. Fired back down by Liam Hanrahan. Behind the net now, the Huskies have it. They look to work it up. Chipped off and out by Kyle Burton. Back the other way from the Huskies now. Goes out the leg of the Clippers player. Doesn't allow the Huskies proper possession in the zone. They go offside, so they got a touch up. Marystown send it down the ice, but it's knocked down by the Huskies, so there's going to be no icing on the play. Huskies racing around their own net now, looking to get it out. They chip it out in the neutral zone. And a big collision there. Hanrahan steps up, but the referee's arm is up for a penalty. Interference and a rough. So penalties going to both sides here now. I believe it's going to be even strength. So the Huskies with a player that needs to leave the ice here now. So they're gonna they're gonna wait now before they drop the puck to allow him to come across the ice and and get out. So I see a fist up. To me, that in case we need first responders over on the bench. So I'm not sure what's going on on the bench, but a clenched fist up by a coach means his first responders need it. That is protocol. So we hope it's nothing too serious, but... So 
So I do see from up here in the booth now a couple of first responders making their way to that bench. here now that's happened on the blue line so there's the collision there looks like favors his shoulder a little bit i'm not sure if it is that player that went off after the hit I can fill you in with folks here as the only thing I can tell you is they call for medical assistance to the bench for a player that I could see that's sitting on the back part of the bench as to what the injury is if it's after the hit I'm really unsure um, but uh, hopefully it's nothing too serious and we'll be able to get play underway here now very shortly the Huskies off the bench now as the medical first responders go and we're going to actually clear both teams off of their benches send them to their dressing rooms so folks we're going to go to a brief intermission here until we figure out what's exactly on the go uh, the most I can tell you is uh, stay tuned to our broadcast when we switch it back live again but right now we're going to switch it over to some relays replays excuse me and we'll be back as soon as we can with more coverage from this hockey game
Okay, folks, we're back, about to get underway here now. Just 35 seconds left in the intermission we had. Had to go to an intermission quickly due to an injury to a Mount Pearl senior high player. But what we're going to have here now is some uh, four on four action. It's going to be a five minute major penalty assessed to the Mount Pearl senior high Huskies. A two minute minor, or excuse me, five minute major assessed to the Marystown Clippers, which will eject that player from the game. And a two minute minor to the Mount Pearl senior high Huskies. We did have a player from the Mount Pearl Huskies who left the game with an injury, so we pass along our <coughs> thoughts to him in hopes of a speedy recovery. get underway here now 1201 remaining in the second period An unfortunate sequence of events there as it wasn't an intentional play to be a five minute major but as the rule states due to the injury on the play it has no other choice but to be changed to a five minute major what would have been a minor has to change to a major So it'll be four on four here for the next three minutes. And then it'll switch to a five on four. Huskies power play for three minutes where the Huskies can score as many power play goals on that as they can. So a quick shot there from the Huskies right away goes off the crossbar up into the mesh for a whistle. Just 17 seconds in here to the replay of the second period. Still 3-0 in favor of the Huskies. 11-5 shots are in favor of the Huskies as well. Neutral zone face-off here. Hussey waved out from the draw. Coming in to take it is Kosh, Jacob Kosh. Marystown wins it. They play it right back to their goaltender. And he is going to eat it up for a whistle. for the next minute and 38 seconds. Hussey wins the draw. Kosh with it now. Chips it to the wall. Hussey loses it. Gets it back. Moving by the defender. Landon Drake. Hussey. Towards the middle. Drops it over. To the point. It's played for Adam White. Kosh has it back, plays it down low for Huzzy. He loses it to the Clippers. They trying to clear it, it doesn't get out though. Back to the point, Ryan Loveless with it now. Plays it over for White. Adam White drops it to Kosh. Kosh gets by one, just sends it down to the corner. And around the boards, White has it for Mount Pearl Senior High. Chips it down to the wall for Huzzy. Huzzy leaves it for Loveless. Starts to go to the middle. Loveless loses it. Where White picks it up. Collision there. The puck does come loose. Sent back down here. There's going to be no icing on the play. 15 seconds left in four on four. Then we'll switch. Well, five on four power play. Loveless with some speed now through the neutrals. Going to make a drive. No, he's going to bring it down below the goal. He's going to send it up top to Adam White. In the top of the circle, his shot gets blocked. And back the other way now is Patrick Hanrahan coming for the Marystown Clippers. Loses the puck to White in the corner. Huskies have it. White with it. Adam White. Connor Huzzy, he's in over the line, but he's going to be deemed offside. 
9.43 to go here in the second period. A different sequence of events here now. Things have settled down. Almost quiet. You never want to see a player leaving a game due to injury, but as we mentioned, we send him our best regards. Moving in there now, that's Alex McDonald. Turned over and sent back out by Marystown. Silver slows it down. Turning Brody Wright. Wright. We're in the neutral zone. He's got red. Takes down his man. From the side now. Working it. Up top. Couldn't be kept in. By Freeman. He skates it now. What a big collision there. This shot there on the short side. Marystown player goes down. They're able to poke it out into the neutral zone, down to the Huskies end. Killing time off the clock. It's out for the stick of Kosh now. Kosh winds, fires. Guar gets the pads out, steers it to the corner. Tied up now. Down low. Centering opportunity for Huzzy. His shot just misses. Connor Huzzy plays it back to McDonald at the point. He's moving in from the top of the circle. Fine. Fires it into the glove of Lavoir for the whistle. 8 8 to go in the second period. Minute six, seven, excuse me, left in the man advantage. Huskies haven't been able to find anything here in the man advantage coming in to take the draw now as he was waved out Landon Drake Loveless first man back to collect the puck turns with it. receiving some pressure there from the Huskies on the forecheck Huskies working it up ice now. In over the blue. Ryan Loveless still with it. Moving towards the middle. Loses an edge. Huskies get a stick on it. Clear it down the ice. Sent to down to the corner by Marystown again. They work it up. Dropped up to Kosh at top. He gets it through the feet. Patrick Hanrahan. Sent over to the fair wall. Kieran Cutler. Cutler. Over to Loveless. To Huzzy with a shot and a save made by Lebois. We're back at even strength here now. Come tied up. Hussey with it now. Drops it over for Cutler. Kieran Cutler turns with it. Backhands it. Picked up by Marystown. They play it ahead. It's up to the stick of Logan McCarthy. McCarthy with a shot. Just misses over the top of the net. Sent back down low again. Comes out in the neutral zone. Connor Hussey with it for the Huskies. Loses an edge, goes down, trips his man. Referee's arm is up. With it there now is Ryan Dominey of the Clippers. Goaltender skating to the bench, and the Huskies finally touch it for the whistle. Six minutes and 12 seconds to go here in the second period. Huskies go to the man advantage here now. Their try on the power play. Face off, going to the left of Silver. Shot there from Sam Ruckgazer. He's up seeing him go to the ice after he 
put the shot there. He got a little bump into the corner. Huskies looking to free it out. They send it down the opposite end of the ice. Lavoir to slow things down. Picking it up is Ruckgazer now for the Clippers. Ruckgazer, stretched pass up, but it goes to the stick of Adam White. Plays it over to Loveless, back to White. Back to Loveless. They're just playing. Pass it back and forth. Having the Clippers scrambling. Loveless, short-handed. Referee's arm is up. It's going to be a hooking penalty. Centering pass here. The rebound. And they put it top corner. That's Adam White. Top shelf. On a rebound there over the bar. It's 4 0 with a short handed goal by Mount Pearl Senior High. Replay on that. Centering there. There's the original shot. Rebound off the pads, and White is able to tuck it off the top. 5.16 to go. The shot there. And Hanrahan goes off the stick of silver. It stays out, goes to the corner. Sent around the boards. Clippers unable to keep it in. Keep it in, excuse me. Lavoir is out to slow it down behind his net. He plays it around the boards to J Josh Mayo. Excuse me. Over to Mayo now. Mayo's got red. He's got blue. From the circle, a shot in on net. A bouncing puck in on front of the goaltender. Nice save made by Silva. From the point again, they send it down low to Mayo. Mayo tries to center it there. Got tied up in front with McDonald, and it comes down the opposite end of the ice. Played ahead. Comes back now. Kosh, almost having the empty net to fire in back. Back the other way comes Marystown now. It's Kerner Walsh. Walsh leaves it there. Turned over. Back the other way. It's Kosh with it now for Mount Pearl Senior High. Puts it over into the slot. Backhand opportunity just goes to the corner. Clippers coming back the other way. They send it up to the stick of Brody Wright. Wright can't get it out. It's kept in by. Carter Walsh to the neutral zone. Walsh loses it to Alex McDonald. He carries it in. McDonald takes a bump there from James Mitchell. Around the boards, kept in on the blue line from Jake Sims. Tyler Russell with it. He plays it. Neutral zone. Freeman going in now. Paul Freeman, backhand opportunity. Goes to the opposite side. Huskies, or excuse me, Clippers played around the boards. McDonald keeps it in down low. Centering opportunity. Gets broken up by the Clippers. They send it to the far wall. And sent back over to Noah Ryan. Nicholas Murray now. Murray just dumps it in. Picking it up on the far wall is Logan McCarthy. He takes a bump, but he keeps gets the puck down low. Puck comes out in the neutral zone to the stick of Landon Drake. He sends it down deep. Silver out to slow it down. Picking it up behind the Huskies net. Now they do. Plays it over to McDonald. Not enough to clear it. Kept in there by Noah Ryan. He sends it down low. It's on the stick of Ruckgazer. His shot. A block. Shot from the point there. Off the glove, I believe. Silver was. Comes to the side. Some good pressure here now from Marystown. Back to the point. A shot from Ryan. Loose puck. That was a bad save. Huskies come back the other way. Marystown. Off the wall. They get it out. Coming back. They lose the puck. Turn over. Huskies get it. They lose it. They get it back, though. It's out in the neutral zone now. Dump down deep into the clipper zone, racing for it. Kyle Burton. Cutler. Doing a 
good job on that blue line to keep it alive for the Huskies. It's on the stick of Freeman. He drops it to the Loveless. Loveless to Cutler now. Cutler winds, fires, gets blocked. Comes out into the neutral zone. Cutler racing back for it now. He'll play it over to the captain, Ryan Loveless. Loveless looking for the option. It's back to Cutler on the wall. Off the boards, not enough to get it out. As Ryan Dominey sends it down deep. Stepping in off the blue was Noah Ryan. Kept it alive but lost it. Al Pearl Senior High coming back the other way. It's Hussey. Hussey shot is blocked. He gets it back. Gets it over for Loveless. Loveless with the move there. Loses the puck. Marystown racing back with it now. Turned over. What a play by Loveless. Gets that puck back. He sends it deep down into the Clippers territory. Less than a minute of the play here now in the second. Loveless gets it in the corner. He takes a bump from Ryan. Rutgazer takes a bump there. Huskies collect the puck. It's tied up in the corner. It comes loose. They send it to the far side. Down low. Loveless has it. Looking for the wraparound attempt. No could do. It's steered to the far side. Hussey goes down. Gets the puck back. Takes a bump. To this side now. It's Cutler with it on the half wall. Cutler sends it in for Hussey. He loses it. He's sent down. The high referee with his arm up. Oh my goodness. What a bad play by Hussey there. The referee already has one penalty and he comes back with a punch to the head to the Marystown player. So both players, four minutes each for head contact. It's going to be five on five. Watch that play there. As Hussey gets up and just leans off and cracks. Sam Rutgers, what an undisciplined penalty there by Hussey. My goodness. You're going to the power play and then to turn around and do something stupid like that. Just no need of it at all. Such an undisciplined penalty. Just two seconds left here now in the second period. Just enough for the puck, not enough to get a shot off there as it became entangled. So that will do it for the second period. It was a bit of a, I guess, a long period as we had the intermission there in between that period there after an injury to a Huskies player. Uh, but nonetheless, we'll have a small two minute intermission here now. And then we'll get back for third period coverage of the this game between the Clippers and the Huskies. Huskies lead at 4-0 heading into the third. We'll be back shortly with more coverage of this game. Stay tuned. And we're back here, as I mentioned, for a, after a quick intermission. Play underway here, a 20 minute period this time. Huskies get it up to Loveless now. Loveless going in, drops it up to Kosh, couldn't get to it in time. Ja Jacob Kosh finds it over and it's knocked down by a Marystown player. Tyler Crocker it was, Crocker loses it just inside the blue line. Huskies bring it out. Back the other way. Clippers dump it deep. Silver out to slow it down.
Okay, Clippers with it now. Shot there from the high slot. Just goes off the pads of Silver. In the corner, Loveless with it now. Loveless puts it up ahead. And your out of town scores. It looks like the Holy Trinity Tigers have a 4 2 lead over Exploits Valley with about five minutes left here in the third period. So a close contest between those two. Loveless with it back now. Tries to send it high. Intercepted by Crocker, who sends it back down to the Huskies' territory. There'll be no icing on that play. Played ahead. They get it in over the line. Working towards the net. Sharp angle shot there. Just goes behind the net. Bump in the corner. Clippers come away with it. They get it up ahead. It's onto the stick of Philip Murphy. Murphy sends it down deep in the Huskies' territory. Picking it up. They try to throw it up there in front. It's on the side of the net. Silver, once found it, covers it up for a whistle. 18 minutes and 17 seconds to go here in the third period. Shots, 11, excuse me, 18 to 11 in favor of the Huskies. With that faceoff staying inside. Huskies win the draw. Alex McDonald plays it around the boards. It'll go to the far side. A bump there allows the Huskies to come away with it. Going down on a three-on-two opportunity. Huskies. Zach Young tried to center it there. Noah Ryan able to poke it back the other way. Clippers coming back the other way now with that same rush. Three-on-two. Their shot goes high over the net. Kept in there. Philip Murphy with it. Battling for possession down low. It's coming. Walsh back to the point. A blast from Drake. Save made by Silver. A loose puck in front. A backhand opportunity. Silver sharp there between the pipes. A centering opportunity now by the Clippers. It allows the Huskies to come back the other way with it. They chip it on the old dump and chase. Picking it up now. That's no Nathan Nash, excuse me. Sent back. There will be icing this time going against Mary's Town with 17 minutes and 18 seconds to go here in the third period. What a flurry of events down there in front of goaltender Colin Silver for the Huskies. My goodness, was he sharp. So after that icing call, you'll see the faceoff coming all the way back here to the Huskies territory. Quickly paid, played back to the point. A shot from Kieran Cutler on the blue line. It gets by Lebois. It's 5-0. So a 5-0 lead in this tournament. We'll see the clock switch to run time now. As I don't think Lebois see that shot from anywhere. We'll see the replay from here now again after the draw. Right to Cutler. He just fires it. And no, Lebois did not see that at all. Face off one. Mary's Town and Mount Pearl Senior High. They're the ones that come away with it in the Clippers in. Clippers get it out. They go down though after a tripping call. It's gonna go against Freeman. So the Huskies will head to the power play. 16.44 to go. So both players still in the penalty box from that earlier penalty. They'll get out around around the 16-minute mark, I think. 16.02. I think, I think there was two seconds left there in the second period when those infractions happened. Huskies win the draw. Send it back to the point, but it's kept in there. It comes out now. Ryan loses an edge. He's Back up, racing back for it. Held in there, a sharp angle shot there from the Huskies. The Bois with a nice save there. Cutler plays it back now to his defensive partner, brings it back. A shot from the opposite end of the ice goes right to Le Bois. Up now to the Clippers. Fighting for possession in the corner. James Mitchell. Mitchell gets it. 
Lays it to the far side. Over for Patrick Hanrahan. Plays it down low for Noah Ryan. Ryan behind his own net now. Looks to work it off as dear to ones that's on the power play. Not really playing it like a power play, though. You know, tough times. You're down 5 0. Still lots of time, though, as this is a 20 minute period. Crazier things can happen. Turned over, and Huskies come back the other way. Lavoie with the save there. Cutler sends it down to his own end, killing time off the clock, looking to get his team back at even strength. Looking to break it out here now. That's Ryan Loveless going. Loveless ahead to Kosh in over the line. Drops it over for Loveless. Couldn't quite get to the pass. Ryan Loveless still with the puck on his stick. My goodness, what a hockey player. Gets it over for Kosh, and he just tips it behind the goaltender. So that will be a shorthanded goal by Mount Pearl Senior High. And we'll see that replay again. We'll see Loveless keeping on his stick. Fires it down, and Kosh left all alone on the side of Lebois. There just easily taps it home. Six nothing is the score. Clippers with it now. Play it back to their defense. In, ahead into the neutral zone. Rockgazer has it. Ahead to Carter Walsh. Walsh with a move. He gets by Loveless. In over the line at the top of the circle. He's moving towards now. Couldn't get the shot off. Referee's arm is up. It's going to be another penalty against Mount Pearl Senior High. This is going to be a kneeing penalty. That's going to go. To number 26, Brody Wright. So that's a four minute kneeing penalty. Clippers are back on the power play. They win the draw, they keep it in. Couldn't get the shot off there as Loveless was pressuring. A shot from the point though. And the save is made by Silver there. That shot was from James Mitchell. Some extra chirping after the whistle here now. Walsh with a shot off the crossbar. Kosh gets a stick on it, fires it down the opposite end of the ice. Lavoir to slow it down behind his own net. Plays it up to the wall. Poke check by Lavoir. Allows the Clippers to come back the opposite way with it. They take a bump in the neutral zone. Carter Walsh with it now. Walsh almost goes down after taking a hit there. It's sent over, a shot there, saved by Silver. Walsh. It's over now to Huskies. Ryan Loveless has it from Mount Pearl. Loveless gets her to defender. Loveless with a backhand opportunity in the back of the net. Shorthanded goal, Mount Pearl senior high. Ryan Loveless, a player to watch. Not only in this tournament, a nifty two-way hockey player for sure. Seven nothing is your score right now. Played ahead. Noah Ryan has it for the Clippers. To the far side. They'll play it up. It comes out into the neutral zone. Huskies with it. They bring it down in their own end. 12 minutes left to this game. Off the board. It's going to be no icing there, though. As Huskies are on the penalty kill. Puck down in the corner. Picked up by Hanrahan. Going in with it now. Is Logan McCarthy. He loses it. McCarthy. Oh, my. Just avoided the collision there with the Huskies player. That could have been dangerous. Huskies get a stick on it. Send right down on LaBar. He easily tracks that one through. With it now, that's Landon Drake, gets it over. Patrick Hanrahan. 
Hanrahan in over the blue. Looking to work towards, centers it. In the back of the net, it's scored by Ryan Dominey. Dominey with the marker there, gets it by Silver. He breaks the shutout. And that's a power play marker for Marystown. It's only going to be a matter of time for this Clippers team, and we'll see what we play there. A great play there by Hanrahan with some patience, holds it till he gets it. And as Dominey is coming down in the slot there, he easily, easily gets that wrist shot off by the goaltender. It's 7-1 here now. Ten minutes to go. Loveless back on the ice now. He's got the puck for the Huskies. Racing up. With it still, another shot misses to the far side. Things going here, Mount Pearl goes. Shot there, from McDonald. Goes up into the mesh. Both teams with some changes here now. Pressuring Cutler with the puck now. are high. Marystown is going to go to the uh, penalty box here now. Number 91, Philip Murphy is going to watch the replay there. You see the Mount Pearl player there, number 27, Adam White steps up, crushes Clippers player, I think. Number 91, Philip Murphy comes back. He's the one that gets caught now. He's the one that'll sit for four minutes now. Power play Huskies. They get the draw. They rim it around the boards. It hits off the stanchion. It's not enough to clear it. It's kept in by Cutler. Cutler, the shot right in on net. Save made by the bar. with it. He'll work to the middle. Sends it in low. Butler was racing in for Fuzzy. Steps off the wall. Buck comes out in the middle. Clippers with it around their own net. They fire it up the wall. Connor Huzzy. Marystown gets a stick on it. It's Hanrahan who that is. They get a stick off the glass and out. Up. Ahead. Carter Walsh holds up. Walsh fans on the shot. Bumps his man in the corner. Clippers coming the other, or excuse me, Huskies coming the other way. My goodness, I'm getting these two teams mixed up. Nice move by Kosh. Gets around defender Ryan there. He gets the shot off in on Lamar. He sees it for the whistle. Seven minutes and 16 seconds to go.
attempt by Marystown there unsuccessful as it went off the stick of a Huskies player. McDonald gets it over now for Loveless. Ryan Loveless to McDonald. On the top of the circle, rips it far side. And misses. Look to clear it out. They're able to keep it in. Bar gets up to stop that one. A bouncing puck here now in the high slot. Huskies with another shot there. Lavoir able to steer it aside with the pads. Point shot now. McDonald gets it over onto the stick. Of Burton. Puck goes off the back wall. McDonald up top. Sends it in low to Burton. Burton being pressured there. A couple of Huskies in on a Marystown player. They go down. They're all fine. Marystown gets a stick on it. They fire it down the opposite end of the ice. Hussey loses it. Touches up on the blue. They get it back. It's Cole Freeman with the backhand opportunity. Loose puck there. Loveless with the move. Loses an edge. Goes down. Clearing out. Linesman went down. He's okay though. He's up again. To the far side now. McDonald, top of the circle. Easy pad save made there by LeBar. Back to the point again. To the far side. Back to McDonald. Winds, fires off the shin pads of Mayo and out into the neutral zone. Loveless has it back, works to the middle. Ryan Loveless gets it over. He loses. Back at even strength here now. Pope checked by Crocker. Sends it. Back to Marystown, they bring it, or excuse me, to Mount Pearl. They bring it back in their own zone now. Ryan Loveless with it. Backhand opportunity there, it stays out of the net. With it now, it's Mayo, he sends it up the wall. Hammerhand clips it out. It's ahead, it's onto the stick of Logan McCarthy. McCarthy, working it down low, takes a bump there from the Huskies. They send it up to the ice. Offside is the play. Mount Pearl offside. Three minutes, 45 seconds to go here in the third. 7-1 hockey game, as you see on your screens here. That is the correct score for Mount Pearl Senior High. Murray just misses on the far side. Huskies collect. They come back the opposite way now. Getting through it there. That's Nathan Nash. His shot is saved by the bar. The bar steers that behind the net. Tied up in the corner. Down there, from Ryan Dominey, the only goal scorer for Marystown. Down low. Carter Walsh in first. Couldn't get to it in time. Neutral zone. Walsh has it. Fires to the opposite boards. Walsh bumps his man. Huzzy coming back the other way for the Huskies. Though. Through the legs. Huzz, Huzzy, backhand opportunity there. Steered aside by LeBoir. Walsh bumps his man. A slash there. Going to go against Mount Pearl Senior High. Some undisciplined retaliation penalties on this Huskies group today, folks. This penalty going to go against Kosh.
Jacob Kosh, two minutes slashing. That'll do it for the end of this period, unless Mount Pearl, or excuse me, unless Marystown gets a quick power play goal. Shots now are 31 19, so it's not that Marystown hasn't been shooting on goaltender Silver. He's made some nice saves for him. Uh, but uh, Mount Pearl has carried a lot of the play here in this game. Marystown, I think, coming off their second game of the day. The nice move there, shot in on Labar. Save made. Last minute of the play coming up here now, folks. So the Clippers, yes, it is their second game. They played at one, and then four hours later, well, really two hours. And by the time you play that game, it's one o'clock, three o'clock. Yeah, so it's about, you know, two hours off, they're back again. So I'm sure these guys are a little tired nonetheless. Um, but, uh, they played pretty good. None, you know, you can't take that away from them. Looks like they're going to finish third in their division. So it's going to be the Highlanders at top. Then it'll be the Huskies, then the Clippers, and the Astros who haven't won a game yet. So as for how the uh, playoffs will go, I don't want to comment on that because I don't want to get it wrong. The best thing I can tell you is pay attention to the Royal Newfoundland Regiment website. That's being updated very quickly after each game. That is your best option to get the most updated scores uh, for that one. So tune in there. Players will shake hands and then they'll line up on their respective blue lines for the Player of the Game Awards, presented by the Royal Newfoundland Regiment. The final score here, 7-1 in favor of Mount Pearl Senior High. The final shot's 32-20, Mount Pearl Senior High. Coming up, we have some crossover games. That's in the girls division, so be tuned to stay, stay tuned for those games coming up. Myself, Chris Ryan, I'll be back here tomorrow with the call of more games. As will we, we will be here with a full broadcast team doing some uh, intermissions, uh, interviews, and, and nonetheless, so stay tuned for as I said, a full slate of games and a full slate of interviews and uh, some good uh, TV product here tomorrow coming to you live from Rogers TV. Waiting for the announcements now of the players of the game. Player of the game for the Marystown Clippers is number 14, Patrick Hanrahan. Patrick Hanrahan, who I mentioned his name several times earns the Player of the Game Award for the Marystown Clippers. The captain of that team. <laughs> Player of the Game for the Mount Pearl Senior High Huskies, number 28, Kyle Button. for Mount Pearl, number 28, Kyle Button. Well, that's going to do it for me, folks. I want to thank you for tuning in. On behalf of the production crew and the camera crew, my name is Chris like Ryan. Thanks for tuning in. Have a great evening, and we hope to see you tuning in tomorrow.
And we're back for the second period of play.
time. It's hard knowing she'll be here by herself, but she understands. I'm really gonna miss home. The gates are checked. The puck is in hand. We're going to center ice. And we're going to be underway momentarily. Coming from the bench is Andrews. Andrews has Nita steps up for a big hit and lays him out. Wilkins with the shot. That one's in front. And a goal! That one just goes wide. Picking up the rebound. It won a save by Kirby. Now 
Michaels with the face off with Skinner with a shot there and it goes under the glove of Wright in the back of the net. We have a tie game. And a shot on that there by Tyler Mercer and that's a goal. And Mercer with the hat trick. Noble again. Bender goes down. Noble going in. Gets it over. Crush. Shoots it in the back of the net and the O'Donnell Patriots come from behind and Intercepted and that pass is meant for Ryder. Baker coming the other way. He gets to the game. Here he shot in the back of the net. A nice shot there from Jacob Kennedy. Absolutely. You can see his hands are. He must have a good baseball coach. Just shot. Knock it down like that. Shot there now. Spurs going to go for another goal. Big bird. A young man, I carried my pack and 
Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Paradise Double Ice Complex for tonight's matchup between Holy Trinity and Queen Elizabeth. Holy Trinity of Torbay, and that's Queen Elizabeth of CBS, and what a matchup this is gonna be. You're witnessing history right here in the Paradise Double Ice Complex. It's the first ever female playoff game here at the Royal Newfoundland Regiment Memorial Hockey Tournament. And there you can see Lieutenant Colonel Lawrence Hatfield down giving both teams a pep talk. He is the commanding officer of the Royal Newfoundland Regiment, and he's going to be doing this with every team this tournament before the start of one of their games. 
And I gotta say, that is quite the jersey he has shown off to these young ladies. So what a great way to kick off the playoffs. This is also the first playoff game of this tournament so far in both genders. So all the excitement is being shifted towards rink B here. young ladies to hear that pep talk. Now it's time to play some hockey. Both teams getting their warm-ups in as we get ready for the first ever female playoff game at the Royal Newfoundland Regiment Memorial Hockey Tournament. As we go to our national anthems. everybody for those of you just joining us this is the first playoff game of the Royal Newfoundland Regiment Memorial Hockey Tournament my name is Seth Hyde I'll be covering this game between the clean Queen Elizabeth Pioneers and the Holy Trinity Tigers the Holy Trinity Tigers had two skills competition winners yesterday in the accuracy shooting so let's see if that'll carry over to this game here this evening And the winner on the Holy Trinity Tigers was Olivia King, so she'll be somebody to watch out for on that team. And this should be a dandy of a game. Two very well-matched teams. Let's see which team will come out on top. History being made here at the Paradise Double Ice Complex. It's the first ever female Royal Newfoundland Regiment Memorial Hockey Tournament playoff game. And this is the future of women's hockey you're watching right here on Rogers TV. Emma Griffin on the boards. She battles with Rustin. Rustin losing it. And now here come the Tigers bringing it up ice. Rolling down the side wall. And it goes around the boards. It's Wales getting it on the, on the boards. Now Molly Gill kicking it up ice. The captain of the Pioneers sends it to the middle to Rustin. Rustin cutting to the outside. Great defense by Edmonds. And now Holy Trinity make their way back up the other way. Here comes Dove. Brooklyn Dove's going to dump and chase. Getting back out by Wales. Sent up ice to Goss. Goss bringing it in. Great moves from her. Taking a shot. Blocked in front of the net. And now it's Olivia King. Accuracy 
shooting winner from yesterday. Back out to Maddie Dunn. Dunn trying to play it back into the zone. Down around the boards. And chasing the puck is Halley. Halley trying to get it up ice, lost on the boards. Holy Trinity trying to jam it to the net. Picked up by Bussey. Bussey twisting away from Tremblett. Back down around the ball, po poked off the boards. Picked up by Grace Nolan, she takes that one up ice. Turnover over once again, Holy Trinity trying to break it out here. It's a turnover, a shot and a beautiful stop in goal by Avery Cluet, who participated in the goaltender fastest skater in the skills competition yesterday. Here's Olivia King trying to get it up. Falls all the way back to Emma Griffin. She sends that one across. Picked up by Edmonds. Edmonds sending it up ice. It finds its way all the way down. And icing is waved off. Yet to have a whistle so far in this game as Wales takes it up ice. Pass ahead. Lost on the boards. It's Witty dumping it back into the zone. Banked off the wall once again. It's Wales with it. And now in come the Pioneers. A shot over the net. Great chance by Megan Rustin. She almost roofed that one past Cluett. Finding its way all the way back out to Wales once again. She has a look. Seeing what she can do with the puck. Pass up ice. Lifted forward to Rustin. Rustin bringing it in on goal. Rustin tees it up and fires and scores! What a shot from Megan Rustin and the Queen Elizabeth Pioneers strike first. Just two minutes and 45 seconds into this one and Megan Rustin gets Queenie on the boards. And what a shot by Rustin catching Cluett by surprise there. That was a beautiful shot. And sometimes you just gotta test the goalies early here. Just take those surprise shots and you never know what can happen. And now Queenie have the lead. Up ice comes Molly Gill sending it across. And it's like a new team out there. Goss flipping it out in front of shot just wide of the net. And Queenie hard on the pressure here. Shot off the cage of Clancy. And now in walks Molly Gill. Keeping it in, ripping it on net. That blocked in front. And now Clancy trying to get it up ice. Turned over. Anna Penny sends it across, a part of the under 15 AAA Eastern Icebreakers crew. Got called up to play with the high school team, and that's going to be great practice for her next year when she goes to Queen Elizabeth and graduates from Frank Roberts Junior High. Here's Clancy getting it back. Lovely pass across there to Brown. Adela Brown sending it up ice. Turned over. Picked back up once again. And now it's Newberry. Newberry bringing it on net. Losing it down low. Picked up on the boards by Brooklyn Dove. But it's lost to the Pioneers as they try to work it up ice. Maddie Dunn. Pass up. Lost again. Finding his way back down to Megan. Brooklyn Dubs. She sends that one across, banked off the boards, turned over. And now here come the Pioneers, a shot on Kluwich. She manages to get her pad out and poke that one away from the goal. And now here's Dove battling with Grace Nolan on the boards. Nolan gonna come away with it. Rustin stepping in to help, finding its way to the blue line. Ripped on net, Bussy gets that one blocked. And now Brooklyn Dove taking it up ice. Dove fans on the shot. And now Rustin passes it ahead. Away goes Gill. Gill shoots on Cluett, and she manages to get the pad out once again. Holy Trinity haven't got a shot yet this game. They're still hungry to get the puck to the net. And now here's Gill with it once again, losing it on the boards to Dove. Back out to the blue line. Maddie Dunn gets it. Dunn throwing it in on goal. Lost on the boards, poked down the ice, and now Holy Trinity left to chase. Played back out, it's Vincent getting it on the boards. Vincent being pressured by King. King picking it up, lost again. Vincent gets it back. Vincent around the boards, lost to King. King trying to fish it out on the side wall. In steps Tremblett to help. And now here's 
Katie Tippett got it out to the blue line, and there's Holy Trinity's first shot of the game, testing out Sarah Hillier in goal. So 427 left to go in the first period. It's one to nothing for the Queen Elizabeth Pioneers over the Holy Trinity Tigers. And what a game it has been so far. And which team will get on the board next? Off the boards, picked up by Vincent. Vincent sending that one up ice, Anna Pike. Lovely pass across. And now here's Goss. Goss bringing it in on net, cutting back around. Throwing it out to the blue line to Anna Penny. Now back to Brooke Vincent. Out in front to Rustin, looking for her second of the game. She got that one blocked. Chasing forward is Manning. Down around the side wall to Clancy. Clancy giving it back to Manning. Lost on the boards. Now Witty going to step in to help. Send out in front to Rustin. Gets away from her. And that one cleared just out of the zone. And it'll give the Tigers a bit of breathing space here. Anna Penny. It's also her birthday today. So what a birthday gift it'd be for her to win this game. She sends that one up to Rustin. Rustin trying to take it back. Picked up by Emma Griffin. Griffin looking to go end to end here. Look at her go. Griffin still going with the puck, just lost it. And now she's going to get it back once again. Ripped on net. Hillier pokes it away. And now here's Nolan. Nolan up to Gill. Gill giving it to Nolan. Nolan taking it to the net. Nolan still going, losing it on the boards. And now away go the Tigers up the other way. Lovely move. Here they come, ripped on net by King, and that shot stopped in goal by Hillier. Now away goes Gill, pass up ice. Gill getting it in. She shoots, saved by Kluett, rebound just wide. Great effort by the Pioneers. Now here's Gill with it again. Gill going for the wraparound, playing it out to the blue line to Wales. Wales shoots, tipped in front. Rebound freed, and it just gets away. And now another shot on goal there by Bussey. Redirected away. Gill looking for it. Down around the boards, and it finds its way to the blue line once again. Wales banks it off the boards, and that one lost. But the Pioneers managed to get it back. Down to Bussey. Bussey trying to take it to the front of the net. Loss on the boards, and now away goes Dove. Dove losing it on the wall again. Lambert taking it up ice. Look at Lambert go. She might go end to end here. Taken down, and that's going to be a penalty against the Tigers. So for the first time this game, the Queen Elizabeth Pioneers are going to be on the power play. Here's Wales taking a shot, blocked in front, and now we'll finally get the call. It is a trip. So a dream starts so far for Queen Elizabeth. Seven shots to one, they have a one to nothing lead with 1.37 left to go in the first period and now they're on the power play but Holy Trinity has been pretty solid on defense so far in this one. So let's see if they can keep it up here. Out to the blue line. In steps Maddie Dunn but that one lost on the boards and now away goes Holy Trinity. Dumped back down by Jane Witte. Sent up ice there to Rustin. She tries to play it ahead, lost on the boards to Tremblett. And now here come the Queen Elizabeth Pioneers. It's Lambert. Lambert coming in on net. Lambert throwing it out in front of the goal and it's taken away by Katie Clancy. Clancy winged around the boards. It's Tremblett who gets it on the other side. Being pressured by Rustin. She manages to get it out to the blue line to Maddie Dunn. Dunn moving in. Rustin pass in front, and that one gets redirected just out of the zone as Anna Penny is left to chase. Lovely pass up to Megan Rustin. Rustin bringing it in on goal, and it's poked away by Katie Clancy. Clancy cutting back, has a look, and she's going to fire that one down the ice and by the Tigers a bit of time here. It's Wales with it again. Pass up ice to Gill, dropped back out to Maddie Dunn. 
Dunn bringing it in on net, poked off the boards. And Holy Trinity gonna clear it down the ice once again with just 13 seconds left to go here in the first period. Played off the boards, it's Kennedy Goss trying to free it. Being pressured by Heidi Newberry and that's gonna be all she wrote for the first period of play. So the score after one is one for the Pioneers and none for Holy Trinity. So an eventful first period of play. Lots of shots on goal, lots of pressure from Queen Elizabeth Pioneers, but Holy Trinity have managed to stand tall so far in this matchup. Tigers throw their forces out first. And now out come the Pioneers on the power play. Looking to take advantage of Holy Trinity here. But let's see if Holy Trinity can kill off a massive penalty kill in this hockey game. And it is Anna Penny's birthday, as we mentioned earlier in the hockey game. So a happy birthday to her. Up ice comes Wales, and, and it looks like the clock never started. So we'll get that all fixed up here, and we'll be ready to play once again. Oh, so it looks like we're just going to restart the uh, second period of play here. So here we go, we are underway for our second period of play. My name is Seth Hyde, live from the Paradise Double Ice Complex. It is the first ever female Royal Newfoundland Memorial Hockey Tournament playoff game as Gill flying down the ice. She takes a shot, shoots, rebound for Rustin, and it's still freed in front, but Cluett is gonna sprawl out and make the stop. That face off, one back out. Wales takes a shot, blocked in front. And now it's Newberry, banked off the boards. Wales getting it on the sidewall, up ice. Gill gets it to Rustin. Rustin backhands that one down. And it's Edmonds. Edmonds off the sidewall. Here come the Tigers, clearing that one down the ice. Icing waved off here. and. Once again, we are back to even strength here at the Paradise Double Ice Complex as the Tigers still search for their breakthrough in this hockey game. Here's Rustin, the only goal so far on this one. Can she get another shot wide? Rebound bounces back out in front, and it's lost on the boards to Edmonds. Edmonds taking it up ice. Away she goes, looking to even up the game for the Tigers, a shot blocked. And now the Pioneers take it up the other way. Seesaw hockey here. It's Goss and Rustin, and it's called four offside. So a pretty tight contest so far between these two teams, and if you can't get enough of that high school hockey fever, Right after this one, we have Ron Colley and Cornerbrook coming up for you. I'll be on the call for that one as well. And what a weekend it has been so far. Hard to believe it's going to be over now in two days. And now coming up the middle is King shooting. Just gets away from her, looking to get it out to the blue line. Down around the boards, Brooklyn Dove is going to get it. And that one... Ripped all the way down the ice, and it will go the full way. 
for an icing call. And a fun fact about Olivia King, her brother Evan King also plays for the Holy Trinity Tigers male hockey team. And Olivia's great-grandfather was Private Sidney Philip Woodland. Sidney Philip Woodland was born in Taylor's Bay on the Buren Peninsula. He enlisted in, the, in August 1916 with the Newfoundland Regiment and was sent overseas in June 1917. He was sent to France with the British force in July 1917. And in February 1918, he was returned to England after his brother had reported that Sidney lied about his age and he was only 15 at that time of enlisting. So what a brave man he was going over there at 15 years of age. And then his brother told on him and he got sent back to England. So a pretty funny story there. Throwing out in front of the net and now here go the Tigers the other way. It's Rice taking it up ice. Rice bringing it to the net, come, cutting back around. Wales banking it off the side wall. It's up ice to tip it. Tip it, throwing it out, and now here go the Pioneers. Bringing it up the other way. Lambert shoots, and that one knocked away by Cluett and goal. Here's Rustin throwing it out in front of the net. Back out to the blue line once again. Brooke Vincent giving it across to Anna Penny. Shoots. Knocked away in front of the goal by Emma Griffins. And now stepping in is Goss. Poking it free. Goss getting it back once again. Has it down low behind the goal. Adela Brown getting it out to the blue line. Brooke Vincent across. Penny steps in. That one turned over. And now away goes Tremblett. Tremblett in on net and a fantastic back check by Kennedy Gaz. So next door, the Cornerbrook High School and Gonzaga game, the Gonzaga Vikings have blown their lead. They were up three to one in the third period. Cornerbrook comes back and it's in overtime and that's next door. So I'm sure we'll be hearing lots of noise from over there. Back down around the boards. Picked up by Katie Clancy. Clancy bringing it up ice. Out to the blue line. Penny down around the boards once again. Picked up by Goss. Goss back down low. It's Vincent battling forward on the boards. And now here's Goss stepping in for it. Gill gets it out to the blue line. Brooke Vincent trying to shovel it back into the zone. Now here's Gill. Gill twisting and turning away on the outside. Shoots and Cluett just gets it under her pad. What a save. That was an unbelievable stop by Cluett to keep that puck out of the net. And here's the replay. Just look at how close that was. Perfect timing from Avery Cluett. That was some stop from her. And she manages to keep this game at 1-0. Now a shot from the blue line screen in front. The puck is still free. They scramble for it. Knocked away, comes back out in front. And it's cleared by the Tigers. Out at the blue line, it's Wales. Playing it back in, here's Grace Nolan. Turning it over on the boards, banked off the sidewall. And now here go the Tigers. Putting on the pressure. Now it looks like we have a penalty coming up here. And it's a interference call. And once again, here's a better angle of that Avery Kluwitz stop. Just look at that. How did Holy Trinity manage to keep that out of the net? And it's just a matter of one chance down in the other end then the Tigers take it up the other way and now they're on the power play so much can change in a matter of seconds in hockey games kept in out at the blue line it's Edmund shoots just wide of the net what a bullet that was now here's Emma Griffin putting it back down into the zone and Penny is going to clear that one down ice clue it leaving it there for Edmonds Edmonds bringing it to the net 
Turned over again by Bussy. Bussy takes it in on net, has a look, shoots that one blocked in front by Emma Griffin. Here's Griffin off the boards and now Holy Trinity look to break it out here. As they take it up ice, it's Brooklyn Dove. Dove comes in on net, beautiful move from Dove. Throws it out in front, nobody home, great effort. And now Rustin is gonna clear it down the ice. She gets it back once again. Rustin shoots just wide of the goal. Cluett leaving it behind for Clancy. Clancy twisting away from Rustin. Now kept in by the Pioneers all the way down the ice it goes. Dumped back in and a great penalty kill so far by the Pioneers as Maddie Dunn dumps it into the zone. Here's Lambert shoveling it back in again. Tigers trying everything they can to break it out here, throwing up the middle. And dumped back down again by the Pioneers. Here's Clancy taking it up ice. Away she goes. Clancy coming in. What a shot. And it is gloved down by Sarah Hillier. Now, so here was that interference call against Wales on the play there. So 16 seconds left on the power play for Holy Trinity. Kept in out at the blue line. Slap shot on net, hits a body on its way to the goal. Finding its way down the ice. Thrown back in by Katie Clancy and now the Pioneers look to break it out away they go. It's Gill coming up the middle. She drops it back to Rustin. Rustin shoots and Cluett makes the save. Another great stop from her. That's save number 12 this game. On the QE Pioneers. Molly Gill's great-grandfather, Gerald Connolly, served with the Royal Canadian Navy back in the 20th century, early 20th century. And now away go the Tigers, bringing it in on goal. That shot knocked away. Penny has it down low around the boards. Picked up out at the blue line. Played back into the zone here and goes into the bench. And that is pretty close for uh, too many men on the ice call there. Uh, too many women, I guess we should say. That was very close to Tigers escaping one there. With 2.11 left to go in the second period, it's one to nothing for the Queen Elizabeth Pioneers and still lots of hockey left to play. Here's Tippett bringing it up ice, intercepted. Dump back into the zone. Tippett still pressuring the puck. Thrown across and now Halley off the boards. Halley trying to get it up ice. Played across. Turned over and now away goes the Tigers trying to make something happen here in the neutral zone. Rustin lost it. Dumped in. Picked up once again on the boards. It's Griffin. Griffin taking it in on net, just avoiding offsides. Griffin, beautiful pass in front to Gill. Shot blocked. Great defense by the Tigers. Shot all the way down the ice, and that's going to go the full way for an icing call. And here's the replay on the Molly Gill shot here. What a block on defense by Katie Clancy. Out to the blue line, kept in, and Wales has been pretty solid on the back end so far in this game. Not very many people have got past her yet in this one as Goss throws that one on net, hit a body on the way to the goal. Here's Gill to Goss. Goss shoots just over the net. 50 seconds left to go, and now Holy Trinity have a chance. 
It's Brooklyn Dove, two on one. Pass across, what a save. Rebound, and they score! It's Olivia King, the accuracy shooting champion, and she has the goal that ties the game. On the rebound, great awareness from Olivia King. Here's the replay, look at that. Brooklyn Dove sends the pass across to Emma Griffin. She gets the shot off, rebound, and Olivia King is right there. Fanned on the shot, but it just manages to get up over Sarah Hillier. And with 41.8 seconds left to go in the second period, it's a 1-1 hockey game. And we got a game on our hand, folks. Playback in, Vincent gonna get it. Vincent throwing it up ice, and now here goes Rustin. Rustin looking for her second of the game, takes a shot, blocked in front. Thrown down to the back door. Rustin trying to free it. Turned over, and now away go Holy Trinity. Gotta get a shot off quickly. It's Tremblett who shoots, redirected away by Hillier. And now another shot from the sidewall, poked away. And after two, the score is one for the Holy Trinity Tigers and one for the Queen Elizabeth Pioneers. What a game we have on our hands, folks. Holy Trinity making a mini comeback there in the second period. Off a late goal by Olivia King. And the Tigers are still kicking as we head into our second period. Everybody, the most important period in hockey is the third period of play in a single elimination playoff game between the Holy Trinity Tigers and the Queen Elizabeth Pioneers. What will this third period have in store? Who will take the victory? All your questions will be answered here in this third period of play. My name is Seth Hyde, live on Rogers TV. Glad we could bring you this game from wherever you're watching it from. Throwing back out in front, here's Goss looking to get an early goal here. Shot just goes wide. And now here's Olivia King, banking it off the boards, trying to break it out of the zone. And now coming in on net, a shot by Goss. Rebound and they score. It's Megan Rustin on the doorstep. She cleans up the leftovers and gets her second of the hockey game. And just like that, the Queen Elizabeth Pioneers pull in front once again. And once again, some great positioning by Queen Elizabeth here. Rustin right there waiting for it. Just managing to get it into the back of the net. And that's her second of this game and surely player of the game honors for this one. And now here comes Gill once again, throwing it to the net, banked off the boards and finds its way all the way down the ice. Pass right back up the middle once again. It's Griffin off the boards. Kylie Rice trying to take it away here. Sent up by Wales, turned over down low. It's Lambert around the boards to Wales. Wales trying to flip it up ice. Wales getting it back once again around the boards. Thrown on net, tipped in front and Hillier managing to hang on. That had to be a tough one to save. 
And here's another angle on the Megan Rustin goal. That is currently the difference maker in this one with 8.45 left to go in the third period. It's two to one for the Queen Elizabeth Pioneers. Around the boards, here's Bussy. Up ice to Gill. Gill bringing it up the middle, coming to the outside, shoots. Saved and goal by Cluett. Back down to Gill. Gill down around the boards. Bussy has it. Bussy out to the blue line. Shot played back in in the corner, and away go the Holy Trinity Tigers, bringing it in on net. Here's Witty trying to get it on the side while it goes to Bussy. Bussy bringing it up ice, and now that one just lost. An open ice, in come the Tigers, thrown on goal, blocked by Gill. Back out in front of the net, blocked once again, and now it's a two on two the other way. Bussy bringing it in on net. Bussy backhand pass across, and it's sent up ice to the Tigers. Here they go, banked off the boards. It's King chasing that one down. The only goal for Holy Trinity so far on this one. Here's Rustin in search for her hat trick. Rustin trying to get it turned over once again. And now here come the Tigers taking it up the other way. Chance to even up the game. A surprise shot on Hillier by Newberry just goes wide. Around the boards to Anna Pike. Lost to King, over to Newbury. Bury coming in on net. Back out to the blue line, ripped on goal. Shot goes just wide. Newbury throwing it out in front. King searching for an answer here on the boards. Now down low, pass back out in front, nobody home. And a Pike is gonna get it. Pike losing on the boards out to the blue line. Ripped on net, it just sails over the goal. And now here's Wales with it. Wales up ice, here's Kennedy Goss to Rustin. Rustin back to Goss. Goss to Rustin, shoots, rebound. Cleared away and now away goes Dove. Dove taking it in on goal, looking to even up the game here. Shot, rebound, wow, what a stop by Hillier. Unbelievable save from her. And she just manages to keep the puck out of the net. That was a close call. And here's the replay here. That was so close for Sarah Hillier. Just look at that. And it almost went in. She just managed to catch it under her pad that was an incredible stop and this game is still 2-1 with 621 left to go in the third period and the corner brook high has completed their comeback and their upset against the gonzaga vikings in a shootout for the second time this tournament the gonzaga vikings has been taken to extra time and they've lost on both occasions so a rough weekend for the Vikings, but they got the fighting spirit, and I'm sure they'll bounce back tomorrow in the playoff single elimination. You never know what can happen, and that's what's so exciting about this Royal Newfoundland Regiment Memorial Hockey Tournament. Dumped into the zone. Knocked away and goal by Cluett, and she's gonna elect to cover that one up with 5.38 left to go in the third period. So what a game this has been so far. Two extremely well-matched teams going at each other here as they still look to tie up the game. And now away go the Tigers ripped on net and it's saved by Hillier. And she has been absolutely solid so far in the second half of the game.
Face off one through by King, thrown on net, knocked away in goal. And now here's Rustin with it on the boards. Down around the wall once again, Clancy gets it. Played up to Bussey. Bussey with 5.05 left to go in the third period. Pinned it up against the wall, but King is gonna come away with it. King trying to get it on the boards, kept in out at the blue line, and now thrown up ice away, go the Pioneers. Looking to take a pretty comfortable lead here, thrown in front to Rustin, it just got away from her. Out to the blue line, that shot blocked by King. She'll feel that one in the morning. Now King with it, playing it off the boards, and now away they go. What a chance for the Tigers to tie up this game. King coming in on net. She has her stick lifted, and it's saved in net by Hillier with 4.27 left to go. What a defensive play by Deneen Wales. Unbelievable stick lift from her, managing to take the puck away and a scoring chance away from Olivia King. And this game is still two to one and those little plays go a long way. Little things make big things happen, especially in the hockey world. And we got a penalty coming up here against the Pioneers. It's gonna be Anna Pen Penny going to the penalty box here for two minutes. I didn't quite catch, and it is a trip. It is a tripping call against Anna Penny. So she's gone to the box for two minutes, and once again, a happy birthday to Anna Penny. Maybe she has birthday cake there in the penalty box uh, for herself. And now they might get a shorthanded goal out of this here as Gill races up ice. Gill shoots and saved by Cluett with 4.05 left to go. Away go the Tigers up the other way. Tremblett shoots and oh my goodness, what a save by Hillier. She has really been incredible for this Pioneers team. Both netminders have played exceptional in this game. Goaltenders surely don't get enough credit. Out to the blue line once again, it's Emily Edmonds. Back down around the boards, it's Dove who gets it on the side wall and she's taken down and it's gonna be five on three here for Holy Trinity. That's gonna be a body contact call. Against Molly Gill, she goes to the penalty box for two minutes and it's gonna be five on three for a minute 25 and there's the Body contact call. And it looks like the Tigers have called timeout here, looking to see what they can make happen. This is so important to them, as we mentioned, it's single elimination hockey. So whoever loses this game goes home and their season is over. And it's gonna be hard for these Pioneers to kill off this penalty. A minute 23, they'll only have three players out on the ice. Both teams making their way back out onto the ice with 3.41 left to go in the third period. It's two to one for the Pioneers as they look to hang on to their lead. And the Tigers are fired up over on their bench as we get underway for this five on three. And a great job by Wales so far. 
burning off a bit of time here. Tigers got to be careful. They don't take a penalty, but the Pioneers have got another penalty. And so two penalties here being served up. It's Deneen Wales going to the penalty box and Brianna Tremblet. So this is gonna stay at five on three. So there's the play on the boards. There's the first penalty. So two players off to the penalty box. Didn't quite catch what happened with Brianna Tremblet. So 3.18 left to go, it's still five on three. It's a party in the penalty boxes for these two teams. Four players in the box in the matter of just 30 seconds. Referees going over to talk with the coaching staff. So they're still trying to figure things out, trying to figure out if it's four on three or five on three. It looks like it is gonna be five on three. So let's see what happens here. It's been an eventful third period, and that's a huge help for the Pioneers as they get that one down the ice. It's Edmonds bringing that one up the middle. Away she goes, cutting to the outside, and she gets that one poked away from her. Now up the ice. They come once again. It's Clancy dancing her way in on net. Rebound freed and Hillier makes the stop. Another great save from her. She must have x-ray goggles because she, she can always see through those screens in front of the net. And here's the save once again. There's the screen in front and she just manages to get down in the butterfly position just in time to make the stop. And what a penalty kill so far by the Pioneers, just 20 seconds away from it going back to five on four hockey. Now up the middle comes Newberry. Newberry takes a shot blocked by Rustin. She gets it down the ice and continues her stellar performance in this game. And we're back to five on four. So the Pioneers have killed off the first half of this. So 35 seconds left to go on the power play for the Tigers as they still search for an answer to Megan Rustin's two goals in this game. Rustin keeping it in. Shot on net, Kluwit makes the stop. Off the boards and finds its way down the ice. Can the Tigers beat the icing? Getting there first is Emma Griffin. And now Pioneers manage to clear that one down once again. My goodness, what a penalty kill from them. Banked off the boards, Tigers take it up ice. Still looking to make something happen and the Pioneers have killed off the five on three as the Tigers take it in on goal. Lost on the boards once again. Banked off the wall, Newberry stepping in for it. Megan Rustin getting it up the middle. Dumped back into the zone by Kathy Manning. 
Played up ice to Goss. Goss taking it up the middle. Turned over Gill. Coming in on net. Lost on the boards and now away go the Tigers the other way. It's King trying to free herself and take it to the net, but she lost that one on the boards. And now in comes Goss. Goss takes a shot blocked in front. And now Tigers try to free it. Goss played back down low. 55 seconds left to go here in the third period. What can the Tigers do? Will their season be over? Or can they get a goal to force this one to overtime? Up the ice they come. It's Newberry taking it in on net. Newberry has it down low. Still trying to shovel it to the front of the net. 35 seconds left. And now sent up the middle, lost. Here's King out at the blue line and it just gets out of the zone. There's no goalie. Can Rustin complete her hat trick? It's blocked. And now another shot blocked again. Oh my goodness. What a play by Emma Griffin. How have the Pioneers not scored yet? And now here come the Tigers up the other way. Looking to tie up the game here. Just gets over the stick. It's Olivia King taking it in on net. Shoots, blocked in front, and the Pioneers are gonna move on to the semifinal round. What a finish to this hockey game, folks. What a game of hockey, and these girls should be very proud of themselves. They made history out here tonight. The first ever female playoff game at the Royal Newfoundland Regiment Memorial Hockey Tournament and what a first game it was so the final score is two for the Pioneers and one for the Tigers came in right down to the last second So player of the games coming up next. So just don't go anywhere just yet as we still have a, a little bit more for you. And remember after this, it is Ron Colley versus Cornerbrook High. That game will be at nine o'clock. And that'll probably be pushed back a little bit as they have to clean the ice surface. is number 16, Kylie Rice. So it's Kylie Rice getting player of the game for the Tigers. And she gets a player of the game hat for herself. So congratulations to her. Player of the game for the Pioneers, number 12, Megan Rustin. And no surprise, Megan Rustin, the only two goals for the Pioneers in this game. Wow, what a game from these two teams. Both of these teams should hold their heads high. They played a fantastic game out here tonight. Well, that's all for me, folks. We'll see you right back here in just a few minutes for Ron Colley versus Cornerbrook High. My name is Seth Hyde. Thank you very much for tuning into this one. Be sure to stay safe, be kind to one another, and we will see you next time.
game 21 of the Royal Newfoundland Regiment Memorial High School Hockey Tournament between the Ron Colley Cardinals and Corner Brook High. We would like to thank all of our sponsors for helping make this year's tournament a success. So right now on the ice you see Lieutenant Colonel Lawrence Hadfield, commanding officer of the Royal Newfoundland Regiment, 1st and 2nd Battalion on the ice giving the players a pep talk before they start the game. Great to see the regiment so involved in the tournament. We've been seeing a lot of them going around the rink, interacting with some of the players, which is so great to see the camaraderie here in the arena. So both of these teams are ready to get underway here live from the Paradise Double Ice Complex. Remember, these games are single elimination, so it's win or go home for both of these teams. So both teams gearing up and ready to go. Huge game for both of these teams. It is the quarterfinal round. So this game is the game that'll set the tone for the rest of their knockout stage. Yeah. 
So we saw a pretty exciting game uh, just before this one between Holy Trinity. Between Holy Ch Trinity and the Queen Elizabeth Pioneers. That game ended two to one. It came right down to the wire and it was oh so close for Holy Trinity even up the game. Cornerbrook High's male team just had an unbelievable victory over the Gonzaga Vikings. They just take them down 4-3 in a shootout to be an incredible comeback. So we are underway live from the Paradise Double Ace Complex. My name is Seth Hyde. I'm very pleased to be bringing you this game between Cornerbrook High and Roncalli Central High. Here's Ella Devro taking that one up ice. Lost to Coles, who shoots. Rebound freed in front. And it finds its way back out to Coles again. Throws it on, and they score on their second shot on goal. And Cornerbrook High is on the board already. So it is Megan Blanchard who will get the goal on that one. Parked right in front of the net, ready for the tipping, and what a start for Cornerbrook. Twenty-six seconds into the game, and Cornerbrook are already on the board. Picked up on the boards by Dalton. Lost it. Here's Peckford giving it across. Hancock's going to get it, lifting the stick. Hancock bringing it in on net, shoots. That one knocked away in goal. Hancock trying to take it to the net. Now here's Taylor Bickford. Trying to take that one back, managing to get it down the ice, and it will go the full way for an icing call with 9.02 left to go in the first period of play. One out to the blue line, George is gonna chase. George down around the boards, it's Wadden who's trying to clear it, they battle away for it in front of the net, rebound free, and it's covered up in goal. So we actually don't have the name of the Ron Colley netminder. So we'll just call her number one for this game. Because that is her Jersey number. Cleared down the ice once again by Ron Colley, and it is gonna make it the full way for an icing call. So after 8.41, the score is one for Cornerbrook and none for Ron Colley so far after four shots on goal. And now up the ice come Ron Colley once again. It's turned over in front of the net. It's Sparkling trying to get it to the goal. Coming out in front. Still trying to get the shot off, but Hickey is going to take it up the other way. Away she goes. Hickey comes in, dancing around the defense. It goes down around the boards, James trying to clear. James gets it around the boards. Picked up by Woodford. Woodford bringing it up and now it's taken over by Sparklin who's gonna play it down around the boards. And now it's Curran. Curran trying to get it up ice, blows a tire. Now Blanchard bringing it back in. Already goal in this matchup. Throwing it to the front of the net, lost in front. And now shot on goal again, it just sails over the cage. Back out to the blue line. 
Shot on goal by Coles, just wide. Here's Blanchard turning and shooting, blocked in front, and that one banked off the boards, and it just manages to get out of the zone. Pat Stone giving it to Blanchard. Blanchard up ice to Hancock. Hancock bringing it in, shoots, rebound freed, and sprawling out as number one, making a beautiful stop. So here's the replay of the first goal of the game. Once again, a beautiful tip in in front of the net by Regan Blanchard. And that has right now been the difference maker so far in this one as George steps in for it. Dumping it down around the boards. Hancock gets it. Hancock throwing it out in front. Rebound freed. And it, the whistle blows the play dead. With 6.59 left to go. It is one to nothing for Cornerbrook High. So it is 0-0 in the Clippers and Holy Spirit game in rink A. Ripped on net once again and another great stop by number one in goal. Ron Colley trying to break it out of their zone. They've had a bit of trouble so far. It's McGraw trying to take it away. Swiped on the boards, but it finds its way to Spracklin. Spracklin down low to Coles. Mackenzie Coles to Spracklin. Now here's Hancock out in front of the net, takes a shot, blocked in front. Finding its way up the ice. Lost in the middle. It's Peckford bringing it up the other way. Here's Peckford taking it to the net. Shot just goes wide. Back down around the boards. Once again, it's Batstone. Batstone throwing it out in front of the net. And now the Cardinals take it up the other way. Looking to get their first shot on goal of the game, but it's turned over once again. Coles shoots. Rebound freed in front. Finding its way out to the blue line. In walks Hancock. Beautiful moves, and she fans on the shot as that one just goes wide. Here's Gorman, up ice to Dalton. Dalton clears it down around the boards. James leaves it there. James still going with the puck. James looking to finish off the rush here. She shoots just wide of the net. And now Ron Colley trying to get it out of their zone. It's gonna be Bickford who will Clear it down the ice. Hancock gets it back. Hancock throws it up the middle. Beautiful pass. Just rolls off the stick. And now Wadden off the boards. But up comes Hancock. Hancock dropping it out to the blue line. There's Bugden. Taking it in on net. Bugden still going with the puck. Bugden to the backhand. Shot blocked in front. And now Wadden off the boards. Out to the blue line. Shot sniped on goal, just sails over the net. Here's Janes. Janes cutting on goal, lost on the boards. Janes still coming in with it, and they turn it over once again. And now it's Curran looking for Ron Colley's first shot of the game here. And now it's Maya Hickey trying to take it to the net, but to find its way back down the ice. Strap clears it up. Turned over and now Cornerbrook bringing in on goal. It's Spracklin who shoots, saved in goal. And now Lombard stepping in from the blue line. It's gloved down in goal by number one. With 4.06 left to go in the first period. It's a one to nothing hockey game. Lovely glove hand stop by number one in goal. Face off one out, Cornerbrook bringing it on that backhand shot by Hancock. Rebound, waiting for it out at the blue line is Rashley. Rashley shoots, tipped in front and saved by number one. And now here go 
Ron Colley the other way, turned over. And they walk once again, lovely drop pass to James. James twisting away, playing it down around the boards. Blanchard parking herself in front of the net. Banked off the wall once again, out to the blue line. Kept in by Peckford. And now it's picked up down low by Sophie McGraw. McGraw off the boards, Devro. Grabbing it on the side wall. Devro off the boards, it's Heath with it. Heath sending that one down the ice and they're left to chase here. Picked up by Burton. Taylor Burton bringing it up the other way. And now it goes down to Peckford. 2.55 left to go in the first period of play. As Blanchard takes that one up ice, here he goes. Blanchard coming back and a toe drag shot and she scores! What a snipe! Actually that was Katie Hancock who scored that one. What a beautiful goal from her. That was an absolute beauty. She goes coast to coast like butter toast and manages to snipe it into the back of the net. Just look at that. Very Haley Wickenizer-esque goal there from her. And now chasing it down is Wadden around the boards. Lost to Hancock once again. And now Ron Colley still looking for their first shot of this game. It's Williams taking it on net, lost on the boards once again. Here's James. Turned over and now away go. Cornerbrook bringing it up ice. Coles, backdoor shot and a beautiful stop by number one in goal. Man, oh man, Cornerbrook have been all over Ron Colley. So on the other sheet of ice, it is 0-0 between the Marystown Clippers and the host, the Holy Spirit Falcons. So what a game that sounds to be. Two minutes left to go in the second period in that one, and it is still 0-0 out to the blue line. Peckford, she passes it across, just gets out of the zone. Now it's Woodford. Woodford taking it in, banked off the boards. And now in she walks, taken down, and that's going to be a penalty against Taylor Bickford. She'll go to the penalty box for two minutes, and that's for hooking. 132 left to go in the first period. It's two to nothing. And the score, the score correction here. Ali Hancock has the two goals. So Ali Hancock has two goals in this game, and there's the penalty against Ron Colley. Played around the boards, it's Reed who gets it at the other end. Now Hako blocks the shot, tipped in front, rebound, and it just gets away. Banked off the boards, thrown on net once again, shot just goes wide. Now pinned against the wall by Ron Colley. A great penalty kill from them so far. Pickford shoots it just wide of the net. Picked up once again by Hancock. Katie Hancock driving it out in front. Knocked away in goal by number one. And Ron Colley are going to buy themselves a bit of time here. Here's Cornerbrook. Looking to make something happen as they make their way up ice. It's Burton up to Budgeon. Now Allie Hancock has it out at the blue line looking for a first period hat trick for her. Played back out in front of the net. Hancock taking a swing at the puck here. Hancock managing to keep it in the zone. Playing it down around the boards. Pass out in front. Rebound freed and they score! On the rebound once again. Didn't quite catch who scored it, but Cornerbrook's 
get a power play goal, and it is three to nothing, and what a first period for them. So it's Maya George who get the goal credit for that one, and here's the replay. Bit of a miscommunication there, but George takes it over, takes her time, and manages to put it past number one in goal. So the miscommunication worked out in Cornerbrook's favor, and now they're gonna have a three nothing lead, maybe four here. They have enough time for one more goal. They take it out in front, it just goes through the crease, and after one, the score is three for Cornerbrook, and none for Ron Colley. So what a first period for Cornerbrook. Ron Colley still have a bit of hope. We saw it come back in the other rink earlier on, so nothing's impossible. Pike and number one we've been calling her for the whole game we don't have her name yet so she'll just be known as the anonymous number one for this game up the ice comes Allie Hancock still looking for her hat trick here in this one pinned against the boards both teams trying to free it. It's a five player battle on the boards. They managed to poke a free, it finds his way out in front of the net. Lost in front, Woodford was waiting on the doorstep. And now backhand pass in front, Hancock gets it out in front of the net, kept it out at the blue line, James walks in, tipped in front, and number one with a fantastic save. Face-off one back out to the blue line. It's Woodford walking in with it. Cardinals bringing it up ice, lost to Hancock. Here's Katie Hancock sending it up ice and now Coles bringing it in on goal. Coles shoots, rebound freed in front and it's gloved down by number one, flashing the leather. So Maggie Peckford on the Cornerbrook Titans. Her great-great-grandfather, Frank Burt, served with the Royal Newfoundland Regiment during World War I. Another of their great-great-grandfathers, William John Cuff, also served with the regiment during World War I. So Maggie and her brother, Stefan, both play for the Cornerbrook Titans. Male team for Stefan and female team for Maggie, who is in action in this game. Out to the blue line, stepping in, shooting, just goes wide of the net. And speaking of her, she has the puck out at the blue line. Peckford takes the shot, goes just wide. Thrown back in on goal once again. 
And now Peckford, she chases it down the ice. And now coming in on goal, ripped on net, rebound freed in front, and the shot just goes wide. Great effort by Abby Woodford to get across. And now Hancock gonna chase it down. Off the boards of Gladden. Sending it up ice, Ron Colley looking to break it out here. Away they go in on goal. Cutting to the outside and shooting just wide of the net. So Ron Colley have secured their first shot on goal in this one and they're starting to get a little bit of fire under their bellies here in this game. Battling for it on the boards is Bickford. Bickford gets it back. Takes a shot and that one blocked in front. Great defense by Abigail Woodford to keep that one out of the net and it will go down the full way for an icing call. And there's that incredible defensive play by Abigail Woodford to keep this game at three nothing. The puck rolls its way down the ice. Picked up by Sophie McGraw at the other end. That one turned over. Hancock trying to take it to the net. Lost again and now Curran cutting to the outside. Surprise shot against Pike. Out to the blue line trying to keep it in. Now that one lost, here goes Hancock. Hancock coming in on net, cutting in and shooting, and that one stopped by number one in goal, save number 21 by number one. One out to the blue line, George tees it up, shoots, blocked in front, rebound freed, they jam away for it, stick lifted by Hancock, rebound freed in front, and the play is blown dead. What a save and goal there. And the net line and the defense of the Ron Colley Central High Cardinals has really been a big factor in why this game is only three nothing. They have absolutely played stellar in this one. Hancock won the faceoff. Backhand shot on goal. Hancock tries to twist away. Now Taylor Burton stepping in for it. Here's Hancock. Hancock wrapped around chance. Rebound freed in front. They still dig away for it. Chipped off the boards by Heath. Thrown on net. Tipped in front. Shot just sails wide of the goal. And now away go the Cardinals the other way. It's Hickey. Hickey coming in on net. Lost on the boards to Burton, up ice to Hancock. There's Hancock shooting, and that one gloved down in net. Once again, by number one. And there's a the little tangle of sticks there in front of the net. Cornerbrook almost managing to get a fourth goal in that game. Down around the boards, Wadden. Sending that one up to Presley Curran. Blocks the shot, thrown on net, blocked once again. Turned over, Hancock comes in, shoots, and that one gloved down in goal. Once again, by number one, save number 24 from her in this game. And what an unbelievable performance. Banked off the boards once again. Picked up at the other side. Cornerbrook trying to make something happen here. Coles lifting the stick. Trying to throw it out in front. Saved in goal once again. Finding its way all the way out to the red line. Here's Peckford. 
Peckford trying to get it lost on the board, sent across. It's Maggie Peckford up ice, turning it over. And now Bickford coming in on net. Bickford shoots and it just sails over the goal. Great effort from her. Throwing back out in front of the net. Blocked, rebound freed. They still jam away for it. Cornerbrook just managing to get it out of their zone and the Cardinals are left to chase. Banked off the boards, in comes Woodford. Woodford, and that one is called for offsides against Cornerbrook with 4.29 left to go in this second period. Three to nothing for Cornerbrook High. So shots on goal right now are 28 for Cornerbrook and two for Ron Colley, but Ron Colley showing some signs of life here in this second period of play. As George takes it in on goal. George cutting to the outside. As Jasmine Batstone in front of the net, Hancock turns and shoots. Turned over and now here come Ron Colley. Dalton plays it across to Maya Hickey. And it circles its way down around the boards. It's Rebecca Spracklin taking this one up ice. Away she goes. Spracklin backhands it down around the boards. Wadden is going to get it. Out to the blue line to George. George tees up, fires, and saved in goal by number one. And what a game from her. 26 stops from her so far in this game. And she is absolutely stood on her head. And just look at that glove hand stop. So much traffic in front of the next man just to follow the puck all the way through. And a key piece in why this game is only 3-0. Another shot tipped by Hancock. And you can see Cornerbrook really trying to put traffic in front of that net. Here's Hancock, drops it back, a shot wide of the net, and next door it is still 0-0 between Marystown and Holy Spirit. That is gonna come right down to the wire, folks. So it looks like that one might go to overtime. There's three minutes left in the third period of that game. And then after that, it is Gander versus Waterford Valley High. And there you can see the Score update, three minutes left in the third period, still 0-0. So that game could very well go to overtime. That is definitely gonna be a good finish and this game is just starting to pick up steam here. Up ice go to Cardinals, chasing it down is Presley Curran. Curran coming in on that, losing it. Backhand shot in front. They still jam away for it, and now Hancock takes it up the other way. Hancock cutting across the top. She curls away here, backhand pass. And a great effort by Taylor Burton, just got the puck swiped away. And it looks like we have a penalty coming up here against Cornerbrook for tripping. It's going to be against Katie James. And I'm just going to update that. Holy Spirit, the hosts have just pulled in front in rink A. They have a 1-0 lead over the Marystown Clippers. And that is absolutely huge for them. So it looks like that game is going to end in regulation and won't need overtime. So we'll be seeing those viewers come over here very soon as Ron Colley are on the power play for a minute 52 here with 2.05 left to go in the second period. It's 3 to nothing for Cornerbrook. One through Williams, kept in by Wadden, Wadden trying to get it cleared down the ice, dumped back in by Devro.
And now chasing in on goal is Coles. Turnover on the boards, the Cardinals take it up ice, taken down, and we're gonna see five on three for Ron Colley. So going to the penalty box for two minutes. And this is gonna be a huge, huge opportunity for Ron Colley to get back into the hockey game here. Five on three for a minute 24. Bit of the same story, the Tigers game. Out to the blue line, thrown on net once again. Bouncing back out in front and now Ron Colley starting to find their groove, find their wings I guess we could say. Bump back in around the boards. Cardinals gonna chase it down here. It's Hickey coming in on net. Hickey out to the blue line to Wadden. Wadden shoots, rebound freed, but Pike manages to hang on. These net miners have really been a huge part in why this game is so low scoring so far. So Ladin tees up the shot there. Just gets it past to the fence woman. And it is a goal by Lauren Pike. Ladin trying to break it free again, but it's Allie Hancock gonna chase it down. Now Sophie McGraw has it behind the net. Sent up ice, beautiful pass, and now away go. Holy Spirit. Trying to get it up the middle, Hancock. Back down the ice, it's Sophie McGraw. With it down behind the net, has a look. Lovely pass up ice. There's Taylor Bickford. Bickford coming in on goal. Turned over and cleared all the way down the ice. Great penalty killing so far by Cornerbrook. Number one gonna leave it behind the net. Thrown up ice there to Curran. Now away goes Hickey. Hickey cutting to the outside. Trying to get it to the net. Just five seconds left to go in the second period. Hancock, can she get a shot off before the buzzer? And no, that's gonna do it for our second period of play. So the score after two is three for Cornerbrook and zero for Ron Colley. So next door, 35 seconds left to go in the third period. Marystown have pulled their goalie and that one will keep you posted on that game. And here it is right now. So we'll see how this game ends off. The host managing to get the puck down the ice here. Goodness, calling two games at once. Look at this, folks. Marystown trying to break it back up the ice here one last time, and looks like the hosts are gonna narrowly escape this one. Oh no, we got an icing call with 2.9 seconds left to go. I'm not gonna know any names on these teams, folks, so. My apologies, I'm over here in rink B, calling the game in rink A. So 2.9, now 4.9 seconds left to go, and let's see how this one closes out here. The final face-off potentially of Mary's Town season, and they're gonna call a timeout, and it looks like we're gonna have to leave you on a cliffhanger. We're sorry, folks. But now we're back to the Cardinals and Cornerbrook game, so there you go, cliffhanger. Pass across, Cardinals looking to start off this period with a high here as Cornerbrook killed off the first half of this and now we got a penalty just as I say that against Cornerbrook. They're gonna go back to five on three for nine seconds and let's see what the Cardinals can do in those nine seconds to get back into the game. the replay of the trip once again. Hey, 
Face off one out to the blue line. Shot, rebound, freed in front. And a great save by Pike. And Cornerbrook are going to get it down and kill off another penalty. Fantastic penalty killing from this Cornerbrook team. And Holy Spirit managed to hang on against Marystown with a one to nothing win. They are the second team to advance to the semifinal round in the Royal Newfoundland Regiment Memorial Hockey Tournament. It's just the second team ever in the women's division, so what an honor it must be for the host team and to just narrowly get by. That must have been an exciting game as that one finds its way down the ice. And it will just get there for an icing call with exactly nine minutes left to go. And there's the handshakes between the two teams. Marystown and Holy Spirit won nothing. And up next over at that rink will be Gander and Waterford Valley High. And what a game that is going to be. Two very well-matched teams will be taking place over there. Two of the favorites. This women's division is going to be exciting to see in these next few days there any team can make the championship really which is what's so fun about this tournament it's kind of like march madness but high school hockey Looked all the way down the ice by cornerbrook once again burton is going to chase number one leaves it for ladden and now lost out in front allen alley hancock almost managed to complete her hat trick Down around the boards once again. It's Peckford getting it. Peckford up ice to Hancock. Hancock banks it off the boards. And now Cornerbrook still trying to get it out of the zone. Peckford off the wall, finding its way all the way down the ice with 25 seconds left to go on the power play. So Ron Colley looking to make something happen here before the power play ends. Banked off the boards and now away they go. Here's Maya George with it on the boards. Trying to poke it free here and we're back to even strength. Fantastic penalty killing by Cornerbrook. Ron Colley made him have a few hiccups. But Cornerbrook managed to just Hang on there during that lengthy PK. Dumped in Peckford, throws it across, and we welcome all the viewers from the Holy Spirit Mary's Town game. Tuning in to this one, glad to have you joining us. As it is 3-0 for Cornerbrook. All three goals have come from the first period, but that could change here, but Pike makes the stop rebound, and Pike managing to hang on and make her sixth stop of this hockey game. And there's a scramble in front of the net. Ron Colley almost managed to beat Lauren Pike in net. Out to the blue line. Peckford losing it. Picked up again, it's Heath. Throwing it on net, shot goes wide. Down low it goes to Spracklin. Spracklin banks it off the boards and now here's Hancock. Lovely pass and away go Cornerbrook. Looking to make something happen. Lost on the boards and now Ron Colley take it up the other way. Here's George. We're going to take it the full length of the ice. Away she goes. George pulls up and shoots. Saved by number one with 6.23 left to go in the game. And there's the save once again. A great run there by Maya George. Already has a goal in this game. Got the shot on number one, but she manages slide across and glove it down with ease. Here's Williams, bringing it up ice. Oh, some nice fancy footwork there from Maya Hickey. 
She's coming for Haley Wickenheiser and Christine Sinclair, both soccer and hockey at the same time. Off the boards once again, Blanchard up to Hancock, and she almost manages to stay onside there. Extra bit of paint on that blue line, and they would have stayed onside. Down around the boards, it goes to McGraw. McGraw up ice, Blanchard managing to keep it in. Here's Ali Hancock still looking for her hat trick here in this game, thrown on net. Out to Hancock. Hancock coming in, losing it once again on the boards, and now Ron Colley break it up the other way. The chase is on here. Williams, can she get there? No, and it is called for icing. It's 526 left to go in the third period, three to nothing for Cornerbrook and I just want to take this time to thank the whole Rogers crew for being here day and night all weekend and this is all volunteer work for them so a huge thank you to all the guys and girls putting in all the work down in that little van pulled in next to the arena and also to all the volunteers working on the desks and everything the organizers of this tournament so great to see it gone back to normal and now expanded to even more teams and to a new gender and everything. It's just so great to see how much hockey is growing here in the province of Newfoundland and Labrador. And another great stop by number one in goal. Let's save number 30 for her in this game. Face off one through, Hancock trying to shovel it to the net. Pass broken free, here go Ron Colley managing to dump it down the ice. Picked up again on the boards, it's Regan Blanchard bringing that one up ice. Bank back off the boards. 4.40 left to go here in the third period of play as Ron Colley still search for a comeback. Anything they got left in the tank, they gotta leave out here now. And up ice comes Erica Williams, banking it off the board. She's still got the puck. Williams freeing it, still with it down low, trying to get it past, but it's turned over to Coles. Now out to the blue line, shot on net again. Devro intercepts, Devro shoots just wide of the net. And now up ice comes Cornerbrook. It's Coles bringing it in on net. Coles turning around. Oh, lovely pass. Hancock shoots, and what a block by Maddie Wadden. Beautiful play from her, and she'll definitely feel that one in the morning. Up ice come Cornerbrook the other way. It's George dropping it out to Hancock. Hancock in, pass across. Turned over on the boards once again. It's Batstone. Badstone battling with Wadden. 3.30 left to go, and now here come Ron Colley looking for their breakthrough. It's Hickey pass back, and it just went the other way. Great effort from Ron Colley with 3.20 left to go here in the third period. Away come Cornerbrook the other way. Hancock shoots that one over the net. Picked up once again on the boards. It's Spracklin shooting just wide of the net. Once again on the other side, Jasmine Batstone. And now away go Ron Colley once again. Still looking for at least one goal, and they'll elect to dump that one in. Smart play by Maya Hickey. Now up ice Jasmine Batstone and finds his way back to Spracklin. Spracklin cuts in on net. Spracklin shoots. Saved by number one. Rebound freed and got a bit lucky there in front of the net. The puck just stayed put. Pass across to Erica Williams. Sent up ice. Ron Colley still trying to make something happen here. It's Williams with it once again. Trying to dump it in. Spracklin leaving it on the boards. Banked off the sidewall with 2.10 left to go and the end of the game is very close 
Off the boards, it's Kara Heath. Has it down in her own end with 1.55 left to go in the third period. Lovely move by Devro. Up ice by Heath, beautiful pass, Hancock. Losing it on the boards, Hancock gets it back. Here she goes, looking for a hat trick. She takes it up ice, Hancock. Oh, beautiful move, backhand shot. Saved by number one. That's stop number 34 for her tonight. 125 left to go in the third period. Hancock pins it against the boards and we haven't had a whistle in a really long time here. Wadden lost on the boards to Hancock and that one finds its way down the ice with 110 left to go in the third period. Here's Peckford. Eckford leaving it behind, and now it's Blanchard taking it up ice. Blanchard bringing it in on goal, coming to the outside. Blanchard still going with the puck, pinned up against the glass. Now Blanchard takes it out in front, shoots, trying to tuck it in, and number one is going to cover it up with 48.5 seconds left. .5 left to go in the third period. It's three to nothing for Cornerbrook, and it looks like they are very close to closing this game out here. Another shot on Netta. Great stop by number one in goal. She has really played incredible in this one. Shooting that one hits the netting. 32.7 seconds left to go in the third period. Out to the blue line, another shot just wide of the net. And it looks like Cornerbrook are gonna hang on here. The three first period goals look to be the difference maker here in this game as Hancock still looks for hat trick in this one. Can she do it with 10 seconds left to go? Ron Colley just going to try to get it out of their zone here. And ladies and gentlemen, that's going to do it. Cornerbrook High is off to the semifinals. And they win this one 3 to nothing over Ron Colley Central High Cardinals. And what a game, folks. Ron Colley fought till the very end despite the rough start to the game. Huge credit to them. They should be very proud of themselves. But Cornerbrook's first period barrage is going to be the one to take this game home. Great game from both teams. Unbelievable performance by the Netminers. They were extremely tested here in this game. And they absolutely stood on their heads. 47 stops, or 37 stops, sorry, from number one in goal from Ron Colley and six from Lauren Pike. But every shot Lauren Pike faced was a difficult one, and she managed to hold on and get the shutout for herself and get Cornerbrook to the semifinals. Player of the game on Cornerbrook, number four, Kate Lombard.
comment about this program, we'd love to hear it. Email or call us or send us your feedback through social media. This is Rogers TV. Saturday, April 29th, all eyes of the combat sports world are on BKFC 41. One of the most special nights that we've had here in Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship. See Platinum Mike Perry throw down with the debuting Luke Rockhold. In the co-main event, Chad Money Mendez returns to fight Eddie the Underground King Alvarez. Also, Christine the Misfit Faria defends her world title against Rowdy Beck Rollins. Plus more Bare Knuckle fights. Watch it live on pay-per-view. More info at BKFC.com. Did you have fun? Check this out. It's nice, right? the joy and laughter with Spirit of Newfoundland as they celebrate 25 wonderful years. Join your favorite spirit performers as they toast a quarter century of fun, food, and fantastic music. For ticket information and upcoming events, check out spiritofnewfoundland.com or phone 579-3023. This is Rogers TV. You're watching Rogers TV St. John's. Hello, everybody. My name is Jason Piercy, and I know that because it says so. Literally, right there. And this is Out of the Fog. It also says that, right there. <laughs> uh, I'm in a really happy, jovial mood here because tonight we're gonna hear a story that is about a couple of friends of mine, Becky and Chris, both here from St. John's, currently living in Buffalo, New York, who have been photographers and filmmakers as hobbyists for a long time, and they're both incredibly good people, beautiful hearts, and they put together a feature-length film that is on YouTube, you can watch it, and the film documents the process of them traveling across our province and creating a photography book and the whole thing is incredible and they are incredible and i'm happy to be able to share this story with you so we're going to take a quick break and when we come back you can meet becky and chris All right, folks, so uh, I want to introduce you to a couple of incredibly talented human beings. Look, oh, okay, one of them smirked. One of them smirked. <laughs> Becky smirked. Chris was like, yeah, I know. <laughs> it was like, she no is, response. Was like, I've heard is, this so many times. She uh, is so awkward when people Becky, call her. <laughs> yeah, Becky Peckham, Chris <laughs> Nicholas, uh, from Becky and Chris, uh, who are, I'm going to say YouTube stars. Wow. I don't know if I go that far, wow. but thanks. <laughs> well, I mean, why not? Like, how would you define a star there? Those are big shoes to fill. <laughs> yeah. You don't have enough followers to be stars? Is that what you're saying? Uh, oh, I, don't, well, I don't know what the star is. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> it's a good thing I called you, um, a good thing I called you talented as opposed to confident because apparently. <laughs> The anyway. confidence is like I, I friend like I have a lot of it, and then the imposter is like, "You sucks." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the, 
That reminds me. So I, I I remember this is a long time ago now because we all met quite some time ago, like a number yeah. of years ago. A long time um, ago. And actually, Be Becky, you were on um you were on a very old episode of my Facebook real estate show that's wow. also now on YouTube, the Ask Jason show. You were on like a really old. This is that's got to be like four or five years ago. Probably 2016, 2017. 2017, oh, yeah. I think you started your channel around the same time that we did. Yeah, yeah. Maybe. Why did you have to say that? I started my channel at the same time you did. And now yeah. we're going to talk about your book and your feature like film and all of this stuff. And the guy here I am. Show. <laughs> True. That's fair. Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. But like you could probably too if you wanted to. All right. So anyway, this is Becky. This is Chris. Uh, you guys are from Newfoundland, from St. John's. Yeah. You're currently living in Buffalo, New York, correct? Yep. Yeah. Uh, and <clears throat> you're still taking pictures of things and making videos and mm -hmm. flying helicopters and uh, saving people's lives as a medical doctor. And <laughs> I don't do any of those things. I said I'm going to ask. Can I say ask? Ask. <laughs> <laughs> so what I would like to, I would like to start with a little bit of context for our audience because you began the process of um <clears throat> i guess the the evolution of what you do now with youtube and with your social media presence with instagram uh started here mm -hmm. like a very very humble beginnings making videos of like like skateboards and scooters and stuff, which is a totally, totally different situation. You're going, you're going, you're going very back to the beginning. beginning. I was going to say, I was like, where are we? How yeah. far back are we going? Yeah. Well, I mean, we can. We, it we was can 1999. As as we, <laughs> <laughs> we we can go back as far as we want. So you you start wherever you want to start. Well, my mother and father fell in love, and um, <laughs> wait, this is this is TV, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, this, yeah, yeah. Take it easy. Like we don't need, you're, you're a doctor. We don't need the 